What's happening, guys? Just before we start this week's episode, I want to let you know, if you love this podcast and you want more of it, you can get an extra episode every single week exclusively on patreon.com slash haveawordpod. If you don't know what Patreon is, it's basically a way for you to financially support this podcast whilst also getting some benefits for yourself in return. You can sign up for three quid a month, five quid a month, ten quid a month, and obviously the more money you give, the more benefits you get. But even if you just sign up for that three quid a month, which is the price of a fancy coffee or a pint in a ship boozer, you get an extra episode every single week exclusive no one else gets to see it apart from the patreons and you also get 24 to 48 hours early access to the public episodes as well that's what you get and on top of all of that you get access to the entire back catalog of the patreon episodes we've been doing that for like a year now there's loads of content there there's also the two lockdown lock-ins we did in this room where we got dead drunk they only go on Patreon. The ones we do in the future of them will only go on Patreon. If you support us, you get shitloads of content for us, and you can only get it at patreon.com slash haveawordpod. Go sign up now, pause it here, sign up, and then come back to this episode. It's going to be a belter. All right, lads, before we start this week's episode, I'm here to tell you about our latest sponsor, Coin Corner. Now, they are one of the longest-running exchanges for cryptocurrency in Europe, and they're one of the best ways to buy and sell Bitcoin here in the UK. If you don't know what Bitcoin is, it's the number one cryptocurrency on the planet. It's been around for over a decade, and it's going mainstream. It's in the news every day. Celebrities like Tom Brady are tweeting about it. El Salvador's made it legal tender. If you want to get involved in the cryptocurrency game, the best way, in our opinion... To do that is to go to coincorner.com slash word pod. You go there, they know we've sent you. You're getting in the cryptocurrency game. They know we've sent you. Everyone's winning. You're helping our sponsors. They're helping us. That's how the pod game works, okay? That's what we want you to do. Now, we've got to say this. When you invest in cryptocurrency, it's like stocks and shares. Your capital is at risk. Don't invest anything. You can't afford to lose. Be safe. Don't be a fucking dickhead. Now, let's get back to the pod. I got my eyebrows waxed this morning. <laughs> <laughs> what? I mean, I'd love to say I could tell, but I can. No, so here's what happened. Right. All right, fine. Oh, thank you. It's a lovely big dick. <laughs> um, so my eyebrows are like a fire hazard and always have been. Yeah. Right. And they, they grow sort of like up my face. So although it's very thin up here, there's actually... My eyebrows are sort of part of my head hair, right? <laughs> like you've got like a proceeding hairline. Essentially, <laughs> yeah. More. And like you, even sitting there, you wouldn't really notice it because they're that thin up there. But obviously my missus lies next to me and her face is here. And it's been driving her mad for a while. Uh, so she was like, you need to get your eyebrows done. So I was like, for your birthday, I'll get my eyebrows done. <laughs> what a treat. Yeah. <laughs> what a treat. What a I'm gentleman. A, I'm a gentleman. I, right. give, I give women what they want. So do, do, do they have like options like, do you know when you go and get like your fanny wax? Do you know when you get your fanny wax? When I get my fanny wax? Yeah, yeah. when yeah, you yeah. get your fanny Just wax. Just like me get my fanny wax, yeah. Do they go like, you can get like Brazilian brows, all off, like Hollywood <laughs> sort of chemo <laughs> brows. You went for the Albanian, look. Yeah, went for the Albanian. Make them bigger. Um, get all the eyebrows that you've took off other people for the last week and put them on me. Um, what I said to the woman was, I said, I don't want you to know they've been done. I mean, Mrs. was with me. <laughs> you know, like when a kid goes to get his ear cut. <laughs> and, and she's like, she was there like, right, come on. I was like, look, I want her to be able to tell that they've been done, but I don't want me mates to be able to tell because I'm not going to tell anyone. <laughs> <laughs> that lasted about four minutes. <laughs> <laughs> so I fucked that up. We can't tell. Andy look good. So yeah, look at me. You wanted. Right. Don't want to be a cunt. What are you going to be? <laughs> but one of them is higher than the other one. <laughs> <laughs> you like The Rock permanently. What? <laughs> no. Come on. Oh, you like the, Gary Barlow, but right. he's always like sinking one goes up. The right one. <laughs> oh, yeah. Sort of is, isn't it? Yeah, but I, I think that's sort of my fault. That's She hasn't done that. Oh, okay. That's my uneven face. <laughs> Oh, you've got a very muscly side of that face. That's yeah. Famous. You just look inquisitive all the yeah. time. You're like, mm. really? <laughs> <laughs> At all time. If you smell. <laughs> um, you strike me as a man who would get this sort of thing done. Now, I've never had my eyebrows waxed, but I do pluck them. You so do I, it? Yeah, I love it. What? I love it's it. It's torture. It's nice. 
No, I get tortured by Seneca like every fortnight. It's not nice. I've got different tweezers. I've got like, four different tweezers, me. Wow. So you go, mi- I used to start off with the middle. I just get me manscaped.com, promo code word. I just manscaped the middle of it. I do me balls with it, genuinely. Me, me sort of, me cock fro, you know, the bit above your cock. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But below your belly. Pubes. Yeah. You try and say pubes, yeah, yeah. yeah. You, you permuda <laughs> triangle. Pum, pubes, permuda. Pubi- that bit. Pubi- I do that, me balls, and me eyebrow gap with me manscaped razor. In that order? I mean... Do you know if you tweeze the middle, it grows back slower and less prickly? Yeah, apparently so. Are you yeah. talking about your eyebrows or...? Yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Just tweezing your oh, goosh. Imagine tweezing your bollocks. Tweezing your, your bollocks one by one. It's coming out. <laughs> Massive ones as well. Oh, Have oh. you ever had the ones... So I'm a little bit older than you, but my ear hairs have started to grow. But like these I, I get the white one. ones, long ones... You pull it and it feels like you're pulling your brain out. I use me weed whacker from manscaped.com, <laughs> promo code word. I feel I should have brought some stuff to sell. <laughs> yeah, they sent us a little, uh, a thing called a weed whacker and it, it's just a little spinny stick. You shove that in your ear and it goes, zzz, zzz, and then they're gone. It's for up your nose as well. Yeah. Your ears and your nose. Your mm. weeds. Piss all. Your bum all. You Do put, the bum put up your bum all. Any hairs inside your bum all, gone. Like a candy floss machine. Just sort of <laughs> <laughs> gives it, gives it, it out it, <laughs> Why not? Don't eat bum hole hairs. <laughs> Sorry, that was a disclaimer that I didn't think I'd have to say today. Don't eat bum hole hairs, kids. You must have ate a bum hole head at some point, though, because you lick your bed's ass. mine. Yeah. Yeah, don't eat your own bum hole hairs. Sorry, that's <laughs> no, a disclaimer. I'm not going to eat me bone. <laughs> when you lick your bed's ass, there must be the odd hair that comes, and you just have to accept that as part of the game. I'm going to accept that as part of the game, yeah. I've never licked a bum hole in my life. You know, oh. never, Why? never, because there's other options. Yeah, but have you ever had your bum hole lick? Never. Wow, oh, that's my mad. God, Lad, God. Your life's going to change. Are you messing? Like, it, it's two. so good that I want to do it for you. <laughs> 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 like, you've missed out. I, look, right, I'm, I don't want to be a cunt. Yeah. <laughs> but you have been through some pussy, like, across your period of time. Yeah. You've done some damage. To, to the ladies of the Western Hemisphere. Mainly due to their mental health. Northern. <laughs> Northern Hemisphere. What? I said this last week. Northern. We're in the Northwestern Hemisphere. No, we're in the Northern Hemisphere. Whatever. Please don't say Western. Whatever. We live in the Northwest. That doesn't mean we live <laughs> in the Northwestern Hemisphere. We are in the Western Hemisphere. There no. is a Western Hemisphere. Yeah, but we're in the Northern. That's what we're classed as. We're also in the Western. But when does the Western Hemisphere become the Eastern Hemisphere? There must be a point because it just goes round, doesn't it? I think it's Africa. <laughs> Which bit? <laughs> the middle. The middle of Africa. Mm, Mid Africa. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the middle of Africa has got like the the middle point where the 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 West the Hemisphere lines cross. I think. He's right. He can stand in four different hemispheres. That's like. not that's not the thing. No, he's chatting shit. You can. If you put a dance mat. Right in the middle of, of this, you'll actually you'll touch every hem- all four hemispheres while you you're dancing to believe by share. <laughs> Especially the bit where you do a jump out. I love that two yeah. arrows. Mm. Who listens mm. to believe? Who plays believe by share on a dance mat? When we went out a couple of weeks ago, you that's played the song believe. Me and Sam did, yeah. Wow. You believe by share on a dance mat. We're getting off the topic. I want to know about this bum hole licking. Right. Well, the topic was so, you've shagged all the birds in the Western yeah. Hemisphere. That's I, really I what I wanted to, I, to say. I, 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 I don't know how it's never... Like, because I've never asked for it, but it's just happened. How's it just happened, though? Like, a girl's been giving me a little fucking... <laughs> and <laughs> <laughs> What's that? A blowjob. Uh, gob up. <laughs> Full gob. Yeah. And and she's just, you know... she they, They'll always put a bit of pressure on your inner thighs as if to go, open them, please. And then you spread them a bit wider <laughs> and you just get an head in there like a truffle pig. Yeah, but, <laughs> <laughs> but oh. like with like Fanny and Bum, yeah. Fanny and Bum, mm. I can see where you could just slip and you're like, oh, that's yeah. shit, that. Yeah. But <laughs> you've got to go past bell end, shaft, yeah. balls, gooch, <laughs> bum hole. Yeah. That's a lot of... That's a lot of things to get. It's like total wipeout. You have to get <laughs> yeah. through all the bits to get to the bum hole. Yeah, but you, she, you don't have to, she doesn't have to run her tongue from the bellet. It's not like total wipeout where you can't fall off. <laughs> like, That'd be a move, that bellet to bum hole. <laughs> Them two red balls that you have to bounce over. I can't over believe to. that you've never had this stuff. Yeah, that's mad. I've it's, just never thought of like, I've never been like, do you fancy? No, but neither have you I. Don't, no, you and don't And several ask. women 
Uh, several. Several women have just had a lick of me bum hole. And then, right, because we all know what it's like to get noshed off. Yeah. What's the difference? <laughs> like, no offense, Finn. <laughs> <laughs> It'll happen one day. And, <laughs> like, what's the difference? Because that feels like, oh, oh. But when they go, does the tongue go in the bum? Um, or does it just go so, around the some, bum? Some ladies just sort of um, wipe the window. And some of them open the window Break in. and dust the shelf. Yeah. But surely it tastes a bit shit. Hang on. You must have a powerful tongue to enter your bum hole. Why? Because it's sealed over, isn't it? It's not open. Yeah, but... I like pushing, like, in. T- <laughs> tongue punch, as they call it. <laughs> Checking in. No. Yeah. <laughs> So when you look at your girlfriend's bum hole, it's never gone in. In? Uh, what are we talking about in? In the bum hole. In. Inside the bum hole, yeah. What, so like into Not the like, small intestine? I don't, I don't mean like into a bowel. <laughs> I mean just, you know. Taste of dinner. I don't yesterday. mean like you've walked down the corridor. I mean you've poked your head in the door. Oh, hello, have a little look around here. <laughs> oh, like, like a sherbet like dip Like literally yeah. just, just in. Sort of. Not like you can fucking sit down. Yeah, just yeah. in. Oh, right. You've just, anyone in? All right. Justin Bummer. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> oh, like a naughty child in the back of a car. <laughs> do you ever do that? <laughs> Have you tongue punched a fat box? Yeah, so you've never done it to a girl and they've mm. never done it to you. Never. I feel like this is like the law of attraction because like I've done it to girls, so I'm attracting girls so that will do it to me. I you... need to get like, I'm quite a hairless man. Yeah. But my ass is like a thicket. It's like a nest. Oh. It's like a badly done cornflake cake. Do you not do it's, anything with it? I mean, occasionally, but I've, I, when you're in a relationship, you just go, I'll oh, leave it. Like it, like it look like hard grid. It's yeah. fine. But now... And I, you are recently single. I am recently single. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> you just wanted to bring that up. <laughs> you, <laughs> you so when you're in a relationship, you just give up. You have no respect for them. <laughs> you grow everything. You don't shower. Fuck them. You know what I mean? Anyway, she's left. <laughs> I can't think why. I honestly can't think why. An asshole like a cornflake cake. <laughs> it, it, so you, you, you've you just got a a sort of forest of bum hole hair. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, see, that's probably where it's getting. So you shaving your bum hole, is that how you do your law of attraction? I, th- I think. <laughs> is that your mood board? Yeah. Well, you have waxed your bum hole before. No, you've waxed my bum hole before. I've waxed my bum hole. Yeah, I forgot about that. I, I don't know how I forgot about that. I don't know why every time you're on this episode, on this show, we end up talking about your arsehole and what we're going to do to maintain it. Go on, pass the picture over. So for anyone who hasn't seen... We, we didn't have uh, anywhere near the, the following we had. When we did the live show in Liverpool, uh, Brennan was one of our guests, as was today's couch guest, Lauren Patterson. Um, and at the we ended the show by waxing his arse crack. Um, your arse crack, and I don't mean to be a cunt, smelled like fish that night. Thank you. I don't know what had gone on, but I got really close to it at one point, closer than I needed to be. <laughs> and just a potent smell of, like, tuna. Tuna? I think so, yeah. In brine, sunflower oil. <laughs> <laughs> this looks like one of them vid. Like, do you know them pictures? I don't remember your arsehole being particularly hairy when we did this, though. Well, it was. I didn't think you got right in there. Like, you needed to, like, get get in, <laughs> knock on the door, check if anyone was in. So your ass leave a red actual note. hole is the hairy bit. Yeah, not, not the gates. No, the hole. It's like cress. Why? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure that you you must be like a medical marvel, you know. Well, thank you, but that yeah. was one of the worst things that's happened to me. What, me waxing your asshole? Yeah, and my I... nan's died Yeah, about three or four times when yeah. I want to cancel gigs. But <laughs> <laughs> she's died again, guys. Nan's died again. She's gone. Sorry, Pete. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but it fucking... Because ki- the eyebrow waxing, did it hurt? Yeah. I didn't scream, though. I was a very brave boy. Did you do it in a salon? Yeah. A women's salon full of women. Yeah, that's how it works. Fucking yeah. Hell. There's like one woman in the corner doing the nails. Yeah. You know, there's a woman doing the ear. There's Pe- a woman doing the feet. eyelashes. Have you, ever them, have you ever had them threaded? No. I had them threaded in Egypt and that was great. You don't feel it. And 
I didn't feel it. I felt like I felt like I was good. You cried. I, I, my eyes were crying. I was going. My I'm, eyes I'm, were crying. My eyes. <laughs> <laughs> You've really worked on your words, haven't yeah. you? My <laughs> eyes were doing cries. <laughs> Fine. My eyes, was, <laughs> my eyes were streaming, but I wasn't crying, if you know what I mean. It was just Yeah, my eyes were watering reaction. before. Yeah, but yeah. I was sobbing. I mean, me and I was, was going, like, no, are you crying, babe? <laughs> <laughs> Shut up, doing this for you, cunt. I had an angry, ter- angry <laughs> Turkish man. <laughs> so is that it now? Is that the birthday present done? No. <laughs> That's all she's getting. <laughs> <Right. laughs> what, you got me? These. <laughs> no. Oh, I could actually tell you what I've got her, because she doesn't listen to these podcasts. I've done my girlfriend. But she uh, won't see this until after her birthday anyway. <laughs> what? She wouldn't see this till half to, half to her birthday anyway. After? After. after. <laughs> um, yeah, so I'm taking her to London. Okay. What are you going to do in London? So we're going to some really pretentious place for afternoon tea called Sketch that Ooh, you went to. I went a couple of weeks ago. It's very and pretentious. Then, so the, on, this is the Thursday. We're going there for afternoon tea. Yep. And then we're going to the Sky Pod bar where you, you get, it's a, literally a bar in the sky. Wow. It, a bar in the sky. A bar in the sky. Yeah. What? Up a sk- like a for a pint with Georgie Best. <laughs> <laughs> God rest the soul. Um, <laughs> um Yeah, so we're doing that on the Thursday. Yeah. Friday is her birthday. So we're going for breakfast at some place that oh, I can't. So romantic that. Breakfast. Yeah. At yeah. some place. At some place. <laughs> yeah. Do you want to know where it is? Yeah. Uh, because I've I've made a spreadsheet. Because is Sam? Does she go like right? I'm having a birthday week, or she goes, it's my day. I'm like, is she high maintenance for birthdays? Because this this is the the first first birthday I've had with her. So she's sort of gone like, we're going to London, and you're organising it, and I've gone sound. I'm quite happy with that. I like sort of spoiling people anyway. That's how I show that I like someone. Have all these things. Buy them. Aren't I great? But emotionally inept. Yeah. Sexually Passable. rubbish. Passable. Okay. Yeah. yeah. But lovely eyebrows. Lovely brows. Oh, lovely eyebrows. <laughs> We're going somewhere called Brother Marcus for brunch. Apparently it's the, the best brunch in London. So right. I, I found that one. Um there's a place called Harry's that she's like sort of showed me loads of TikToks. I've basically hinted for months. Oh, this place will be good, this place will be good, this place will be good. She loves Italian food. So we're going there. The Saturday, all I'd booked is a place called Muse. Now, it's it's fine dining for lunch. So we're going fine dining lunch at okay. like half one. And then last night she was like, oh, England play? And I'm like, I'm not the biggest England fan in the world as we've discussed several <laughs> times on the podcast, but she was like, England play Saturday night? So could we go and watch that in London? So she actually wants to go and watch the footy, which is just Sam. great. The one game England aren't playing in London. Oh, I'm so happy about it. <laughs> I bet. I'm so happy that this is the one they're not in London. Being in London for that, I think I'd kill myself. And then Sunday, we're going for uh, pasta for lunch, and then I have, I've left the, left the rest of the day empty. So you're basically going on a food tour for three or four days. Yeah, but that's what she loves. She's a foodie. Is she a bit of a feeder? Yeah. Yeah, do you love yeah. it? No, I don't. I do, but I wish I didn't. That's the right answer. I want to be thin, and she wants to eat, and I want to eat, but I can only not eat if I'm with someone who will not eat for a bit, but she won't. Do you know what I mean? What, you try to starve her? No, I want her to starve me. Do you know what I think you should do? This would be a lovely treat, I think, for the birthday. So you go all these lovely places, and then the final thing you go, I've got one more dish. And then, do you know those posh, like, silver things that you put, like, where you pull out the food like that? A cloche. A cloche. And it's just your ass. And then she has to... (laughs) Do you think I'm a contortionist? How am I supposed to present that? <laughs> we'll cut all in my... table. You go underneath it. Pop your ass up. I think they do it at parties in Soho. How am I supposed to explain that I'm getting under the table? <laughs> what am I getting under the table for? I don't want to see it. I don't want. I don't want to see your face <laughs> when you open this. Get, open it, but in a minute. Wait. And get, get all the I'll, family as well. I'll knock three times on the table when I'm ready for you to open it. Just do the Pringles tube knob then. The Pringles tube knob. Yeah. Snack size or full. The, the three foot one they sell in Sweden now. <laughs> oh. Still need two. <laughs> Open that <laughs> on a step yeah. ladder. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I've got a one present, which is quite an expensive one, considering I'm paying for all that. And do we get to know what it is? It's a Dyson Air Wrap. Oh, do you love it's an that? Air Wrap. Yeah, it's a, it's a funky, funky contraption. Like it's a hairstyle and kit. 
I'm glad that you let me say uh, rap before going, you got a hoop. Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, clean everything. Yeah. Hey, there you go, babe. Happy birthday. <laughs> Do the floors. <laughs> go like, on, get it out. Use it. It like sucks your hair in, doesn't it? And yeah, it, it's a, essentially a hair curler or straightener that doesn't use heat. It uses air. That's going to get used off you, though, isn't it? I'm going to suck myself off with that. <laughs> You're going to circumcise yourself with a me, Dyson like, air wrap. Putting it around me knob when she's on. <laughs> a <Woo>! baby. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! She'll come in and be like, this is fucking sick, this. I'll get you a new one. Yeah, you go, look, my hair looks like my fucking knob looks like a duck's dick. <laughs> I've got a corkscrew cock. And she goes, happy birthday, mate. <laughs> Very hard to get hold of them as well. The sold out on the Dyson website, the sold out on the John Lewis website. I went into John Lewis, they were like, we haven't had any for months, but if someone brings one back because it's broke, we could sell you that. I was like, oh, <laughs> oh, I don't want it because it's broke. And then I went to Boots. And I went, uh, can I have the Dyson Air app, please? It says you've got them in stock on the website. She was like, I've just sold me last one. But I hate it. it when they do that. When you're like, what? You're telling me information that doesn't help me. Yeah. Do you know when they go, we had 12 yesterday. You're like, <laughs> have you got any today, bitch? <laughs> do you have a pen? I had one before. <laughs> I used to have a pen and I was using it. So you can write that one either. Um, but then I went back into Boots a few days later because what happened was she said they didn't have them. So I went on the Boots website and bought it. It's like 400 quid. Bought it. Bought Remember, it. guys, it sign come, up to the Patreon. Do my do it, my role. He's got to pay for his Dyson Airblade. Patreon.com slash have a Dyson Airblade. That's a hand dryer, isn't it? Airblade. <laughs> Imagine you bought one of them. I plugged it into the wall and she's like, fucking great. <laughs> um, yeah, so I, I bought it on the Boots website. Come out my bank. And then immediately after they come out my bank, Boots emailed me and said, we cannot fulfill this order. Uh, we will refund you in five to seven working uh, days. And I was like, that's... That should be, I, I, when I become Prime Minister, when I run for Prime Minister, yeah, 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 yeah. that's going to be one of my lead things. Like, there's two things I'm going to campaign on. The first one is the, the refund has, has to be as fast as the purchase. Bollocks that they get to go, ah, we'll give you that in a week. Fuck you, Boots. <laughs> give me me fucking money. What if I didn't have the, any more money to then buy her a birthday present? Oh, God, this is McDonald's all over again. Do you know, what, do you know what Bloom and Wild is? No. I got me a bit of Bloom and Wild subscription for their birthday. It's Flower Box. Letters, uh, flower box, flowers, flower box, letter box, flowers. So every month she gets a bunch of flowers through the letter box in a box. Um, and I cancelled it the other day because she's never in and they won't put it through the letter box with a sign for. It's ridiculous. Why are they called letter box flowers then? Because they're meant to come through the letter box, but you've got to sign for them if you get a, a certain order, whatever it is. And I had to request to cancel my subscription. So we have received your request. I was like, no, no, no. I don't no, want done. to pay anymore. We'll get back to you in the next seven days with your request. I was like, or oh, I could just go to the bank and fucking cancel it. You I could don't... like, you could save her a bit of money though, or save yourself money and just go like, I'll get my flam post and that. I, I could instead could. of me sending her. It's flowers, been a tough year. There's loads of dead people. Loads. And you go. This one's great. This one says mum. So, there you go. There you go. <laughs> Do the letter oh, box. Let, well. yeah, yeah. Let's have a baby. <laughs> mum. She break up with me. What one day you'll be a grandmother. <laughs> oh, we're going funeral ones now as well. Yeah. yeah, Dad. If you were, if you were a boy, you could have, you would have been called Little Timmy. <laughs> Are the flowers in the shape of Little Timmy? I think they'll do pretty much anything you ask them for. What do you reckon the worst thing is that you could ask for funeral flowers? Do you know if you rung up and you went? Got Lol. a funeral on. Lol. <laughs> <laughs> what well, if that's her name? Like oh, the yeah. girl in This Is England. So people would just assume it's her name. Or like LMFAO. Bitch. bitch. <laughs> dead <Slag>. bitch. <laughs> Audible dead bitch deserved it. Can I have them in, uh, in the lily window? Lilies, please. <laughs> Can I have them in lilies? That'd be great. <laughs> they were her favourite flower. It's what she would have wanted. Because you know she wanted everything, the fucking bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know lilies smell a bit like cat piss after a while? I feel they smell like my ass yeah. after a live show. <laughs> <laughs> Another thing, I don't know whether I've mentioned this on Pop 4, I've definitely mentioned it to you. Here's what I'd rule out if I was Prime Minister, right? Garnishes. I don't want garnishes. No. You know, like in, on food. Yeah, where you go, oh, it's suddenly a plant on top of my thing. Yeah. Because like, you just, especially on like a, a liquid, like on a soup or a curry, and they're like, oh, he probably wants some coriander sprinkled on the top of that, so it smells like fairy liquid. I don't. Do you get the coriander thing? Yeah, you were them people. Yeah. Oh really? Sarah Genetic, that isn't it? Yeah. Sarah is one of them. Yeah. 
soapy shite. It's horrible. Mad. You get it as well. I don't get that. I taste I can, coriander. I, yeah, I, can, I can have it sort of hidden within a recipe. Yeah. So, like, if it's in, like, if it's in the curry, then I don't really, it doesn't really bother me. I oh, so still... you're like a child. Winner. Yeah. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> Someone just bought a hoodie. Thank you. Uh, um... Like, do you but know like, when you have to hide food for kids, like vegetables and zhuzh it up no, and you put can't in a just put a load of coriander in the middle of the, the, the curry. What I mean is, if it's cooked into the curry, okay. very finely diced and it's liquidized, I'll, I'll be able to tell, but it won't put me off it. But a sprinkle of coriander on top of food literally just tastes like you've gone, is that curry ready to go? Okay, let's just get the domestos out. There <laughs> you go, send that out to him. It's horrible. Do you know why they do it, though? Why? Because it looks fucking dog shit when, if it comes out and you order... I don't know, lentil soup. Well, then list it. Say on the menu. That that would be my policy. You've got to list your garnishes. Garnishes Like, this is a, a, a pterodactyl egg with garnished with a lemon. Do you sell that in sketch? <laughs> I can't be able to get that on. on Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Fair I, enough. All right, I get it. Tell me what you're going to sprinkle on me food. Because otherwise, wh- why are you hiding it? It's because you know some people are going to think it's fucking horrible. Otherwise, you'd list it. Like, what, you list everything else. What's the worst food then for you? Like, because everyone's got their like, baseline where it's like, that's fucking horrible. I would never eat. Is it, is it coriander? Probably. What's yours? Baked beans. What? I mean, oh. they don't usually come on what a fucking steak. What is it with that fucking seat? Joe Dan's never eaten a baked bean in his life. They're horrible. They're like, if, even if I see a picture of one, I'm like, minging. And I think it's because my mum used to make me eat them. When you pour, you just go, here you go, there's your tea. You it's know, a tin of beans. Tin, you're not even fucking <laughs> cooked. We all go, we cheers them. Like, <laughs> eyes, 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 eyes. <laughs> My girlfriend loves bean juice. <laughs> but not, but hates beans. <laughs> it's just tomato sauce, isn't it? Mm-mm. No, it's not tomato sauce. Because no, if that came out of a tub, it. when I'm putting it on my chips, <laughs> I'd be shitting out my eyes. It's fucking horrible. If, if we go for breakfast and I get beans with my breakfast... Mm. She will like sort of dip her toast in, the, yeah. in my juice. Yeah, I get that. If there was one bean on the plate, imagine a big like chef plate, like proper, yeah. and it's like all like nice like steak, chips, whatever. And there was just one. That's going in the bin. That's mad. Horrible. Are you a fussy eater in general? No, I love food. Especially during lockdown. That's why I'm wearing a jacket. I've got tits. <laughs> the old Adam Rowe technique. <laughs> the old... <laughs> Hide it. <laughs> get, get me a blazer on. Is there anything else you're fussy with? Mm, let me think. Sprouts are minging, but that's sort of normal, isn't it? I went through a phase. I like them again. They are? Yeah, I've come out to the side. Yeah, I've always liked them. Yeah. Since I was a kid, I've always liked sprouts. I just think they're a bit, bit rotten. And lettuce. The flavorless vegetable. The flavorless what? Like why is it's it so green, watery? Water, isn't it? Yeah. It's, why is it, where's the water? It's ju- it's just flavorless, like water. That's what I mean. It's just like green, crispy water. No, but you bite into it, and then suddenly it's like you've had a shot of water. Yeah. It's horrible. It just ruins burgers, and nah, it's not for me. Yeah, I when I get a burger, this is a, this is going to be sort of uh, controversial. controversial. I li- I prefer them plain. I like them with stuff on. Mm. Well, it depends on the burger. Like a, a double cheeseburger from McDonald's is better without the mustard and tomato sauce and the pickle. What? No. It is. No. Just a plain oh, beef know. and cheese. What? I can't believe you've just said that. It's Why? like eating an eraser. Have you ever tried one of them McDonald's burgers with nothing? Yeah, I used to work there. I used to literally just, every now and then, if I was hungry, I'd just slap a burger on the grill <laughs> and just like eat it with the fucking spatula. <laughs> All in in one. <laughs> Do you remember that lad off come down with me? He was sucking off the fucking... so much. Have you seen it? Yeah, yeah. It's fucking one of the worst that things guy. ever. <laughs> <laughs> it's the thumbnail picture. <laughs> Single now. Hi, <laughs> guys. I used to eat everything in Mackey's. I used to make extra of everything and then just eat it. So, what? like, or like, I'd purposefully burn stuff. <laughs> I'm not no, even no, messing. Not the, like the GP was down whenever you worked. No, so because McDonald's is such a big business, quite big, Mackey's it is. doing all right. Yeah, right. The fast food place, McDonald's. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. McDonald's, mm. McDonald's. The, the, the yellow place. arches. M. Yellow arch. Yeah, <laughs> looks like an M, yeah. but it's actually two arches. The Golden Bridge. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. Mm. Um, so what I'd do is I would 
so because they're such a big company, they just expect waste. So under every single till in McDonald's, there's a grey bin. This was when I worked there anyway, and a red bin. And the grey bin is just a bin, and the red bin is a waste bin. So if you if you were like if so when they make like six double cheeseburgers, they're allowed to be in that fucking thing that's there for like fifteen minutes. The slide, the burger slide. Oh, I love yeah. That. Right on the sixteenth minute, they have to be thrown into the red bin. Right, right. And also, if you fuck up the food, they're meant to be thrown into the red bin. But all the red bin is is a sort of middleman for the big bin. Isn't that weighed? No, no. So what you do is every now and then they'll go like someone do a red bin count. So let's say you weren't serving anyone. You'd go and get all the red bins and stand by the big bin. And you'd go, right, double cheeseburgers. One, two, three, four. And you'd write down four. Right. And then they're in the bi- the main bin. Then the red bin goes back to where it was and it's now empty. There's no way of distributing them to people who can't eat food anymore. Like, who hasn't got any money? Can't, like homeless people? Can't, can't eat food anymore. Yeah, like homeless people. What? Can't they eat can't. food anymore? As in, they don't have the means. Can't eat food anymore? Have all these burgers? They don't have means of buying food. I don't know what you're going to do with them. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> they just bin food that They've is... They've loads of stuff. So what I would do... So chicken nuggets are meant to be in... I can't remember the timings, but let's say they were meant to be in the deep fat fryer for three minutes. I'd leave them in for like four and a half and they'd be just too brown to be saved. And then I'd just write... Different time then. I'd Different just, time. <laughs> <laughs> You're too brown. <laughs> Out you. Come on. Come on. Got the Dulux colour chat. You know what you've done. <laughs> What's the brown called? What? What's the brown called? What do you mean? The, the, the two brown and the Dulux. Dulux chart. What's um, its name? Burnt Nugget. Tap in. Oh, fucking played that well, didn't Easy. I? Just played it for Isn't a while. Isn't that on your wall? <laughs> burnt Nugget that. <laughs> <laughs> You're right, Steve. Well, yeah, yeah, I'd burn them, but not throw them away. <clears throat> and then the, there's like a, a, a chicken thing in the back of Mackey's. Again, this is 10 years ago when I worked there. Like a chicken thing. And that's got like loads of different trays in. So there's a tray of nuggets. There's a tray of uh, like selects. There's a tray mm. of the burgers to go on Chicken Legends. There's a tray of uh, chicken sandwiches. There's a tray of chicken mayos. But there's like three or four of nuggets because they're very popular. But like there'd always be one empty. So I'd burn a full batch of chicken nuggets, write it on the waist, <laughs> then put it in the spare one. And then for the rest of my shift, I've got fucking crispy chicken nuggets. And they were still lovely. They just went up to McDonald's specific standard but free but which free tastes the best mm. mad I wonder how much money you've cost McDonald's over the years oh, you look, you're well into the tens 10 25 pounds tens of pounds <laughs> <laughs> I used to work at Pizza Hut when I was 16 17 yeah and what I used to do my mates would come to the fire exit and you just put like so I'd give them like 10 pizzas a night it was fucking great and then my brother cottoned onto this and he goes fancy getting us a pizza yeah, pizza I forgot on the way out, I just took a pizza out of the bin in a box. And he's giving me a lift home and he's eating. He goes, this is, this is weird, this. <laughs> Loads of fag ash on top of it. And I was like, oh. Mm. Mm. And I thought, oh, I think it's just like a seasoning. And he ate it. All of, like binny pizza. But we used to steal all the time. It was fucking great. Of course it was. That's what the lockers were for. Little garlic bread. Mm. Uh, <laughs> he used to come into a bar. I won't say which bar it was. It doesn't exist anymore. No, but... The people the, the person who owns it does. <laughs> yeah. Um, he used to come in and sit at the bar, right? And he would pay me with his keys. <laughs> so, because he was my mate, right? You've got to be clever when you're stealing. Yeah. Right? So, because he's my mate, they're checking, aren't they? They might check the cameras and go, right, he, he gave him a bottle of Peroni at that time or a rum and coke. Mm-hmm. Right. So, let's double check on the camera that that went through the till. What, and then they're tilling up and they go... We're actually, we're actually up a pair of house keys. <laughs> <laughs> so what I'd do is, he'd, he'd go, let, uh, I'll have a, a Sailor Jerry's and Coke, and I'd go to the till, and I'd put Sailor Jerry's and Coke through, and he'd hand me his keys, and I'd lash them in the till. Then I'd pick the keys back up and give them back. So now the till is, let's say a rum and Coke was £3.50. Yeah. It's £3.50 down. But then later on, someone would come in and order eight Peronis, and I'd just put seven through. But I'd still charge them for eight. Maths. So, yeah. So I'd know how many drinks he'd had and how down the till was and how many people I had to then get that back from as the night went on. You're good with that. Like when I first met, so we've known each other, what, about 10 years now, 11 years. Uh, yeah. 
And like you were very, I mean, that's why they call you Rowie Bags, isn't it? Yeah. But like <laughs> money wise, you're like, spot, I'm shit with it. I'm really bad with money. I've got no money and I earn fairly decent money, but I've got no money. Because Where's I, it going? Well, you're buying fucking Dysons. I, I buy Dysons, <laughs> I book restaurants, I, I'll go out for a pint. I save nothing. I just, like, I think it's, like, from without doing the whole fucking X Factor story, we had fuck all growing up. Hey, mate, so now on. I'm in a position where I've got a little bit. I'm just like, I can have whatever I want. And I've always said to myself for, like, the last, like, 10, 12 weeks, like, f- from a very young age, <laughs> when I get to 30, I'll fuck, I'll start being serious. Absolutely. Which is bollocks. January. Absolutely. Th- 30s, take yourself serious, innit? So I've got like another six months of just being a frivolous <laughs> bella. You lying bastard. What I want to say is, um, you're free to judge his houses. Congratulations. <laughs> well done, mate. You've done you're it. going to New York. <laughs> you're going to Louis, Louis' house. Say that again. You're going to New York in January. Yeah. So you're gonna stop. You're just gonna go to New York and do. Oh no, no, fr- no frivolity. Yeah. I turn thirty the day I come back. I thought you were there for your birthday. I am, yeah. Really? Oh, the day you leave is your thirtieth. No, the, well, the morning after that. All oh, right. So I just I won't get anything from the so New York, home. <laughs> <laughs> and that'll be a good start. Duty free from America. <laughs> <laughs> Don't think it works. Like that, does it? <laughs> well, there's a duty free, isn't it? No. Yeah, but instead, because it's America, it's very. Di- it's not like dupe and fucking <laughs> big Toblerones. <laughs> You can get a grenade and grenade <laughs> if you want. <laughs> you can buy hard drive, this loads of pits for kids grenade. on it. <laughs> yeah. Actually, let's protect me and my family. No. But it's in a clear bag. <laughs> Swimming and you can take 200. <laughs> <laughs> These are men for grenades. It's fine. We're all right. We're good. But yeah, I'm going to start being good when I'm 30. Yeah, you're fucking How old not. are you? I'm 34 and I can tell you now, you're not. When did you buy your house? Last year, about 18 months ago. So you were 32? Yeah. But yeah. I bought it at auction. And that's the stupidest thing you could ever fucking do. Because wow. you, you just turn up and you go, see your driving license? Yeah, there you go. And then you go in a big room and there's loads of different types of people. Um, <laughs> and then... Loads of different types of people? Yeah, there's like men, women, <laughs> property developers. <laughs> 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 and then you just put your hand up. House, please. Do you want to... And then someone else goes, no, nah, I want the house. No one's checking whether I've got the money. Oh. House, 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 house. I've won an house. And the, <laughs> when they go, you've won an house, I went, fucking hell. I don't know if I could afford this house. And then they wish you off and they make you sign loads of stuff. And then it seeps in the way you go, I'm going to have to be funny now for the next 25 years. So you got a mortgage on the house? I got a mortgage. But at auction, people usually buy it with cash. And no yeah. one tells you that. So you put your deposit down. Yeah. And then there's loads of extra things where they go, well, uh, we had to point at you when you put your hand up. So that's a grand. You, <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah. And then they've got one of them hammers. They're like, expensive, that, innit? That's 500 Sold. quid. Sold. That's, honest to God, when I heard that, my bum all went. I was like, oh, God. I felt like I was 32 again. So and did the- you, hang on, did you, so the house you bought, mm. Was that the first time you'd seen it, or did you know it was up for auction? So I'd been in when it was on sale, but no one wanted it, because it was so shit. And then it went up for auction. I was like, I'm getting that house. Right, so you didn't know the house you wanted. You didn't just go, I'll have that one. Yeah, I wasn't just going any old house. Because it was selling all sorts. You can buy shops. You can buy fucking just big plots of land. But I was going for that house. See, this is how shit I am with money. I'd have gone there for that house and come back with, <laughs> and come back with three pots of land and two bag and booze. Do you know what I mean? Someone, someone, bought, someone bought a shop for five grand. It was the one before me. And I was like, should have bought that shop and just lived in it. <laughs> <laughs> Could have been living in a shop now. <laughs> <laughs> but, right, okay. Was it a bargain? Yes and no. So it was a bargain for what it will be. Yeah. But I've had to, like, everything was wrong with it. Yeah. Asbestos everywhere that needed a new roof. The guy who sold it me wouldn't let the bank in to come and... I think this is what women do with, like, fat, ugly men that are sound. I think they go, this is a bargain for what he can be. If I get him in the gym... (laughs) 
and start getting him to wax his eyebrows. As long as he stays being that nice to me, he's going to be a fucking great husband. Sounds and like then, real. Well, <laughs> and then Dion Dublin pops up. <laughs> 10 in the morning. He's like, look at this sack of shit. <laughs> it's fucking crumbling. It's a mess. A lot needs sorting. And then six months later, they come back. They go, how much have you spent on him? And she goes... Emotionally, a fucking shitload. <laughs> but it's magnolia to fuck. He's got his arsehole shaved. Let's see how much it's worth. He was a four. He's uh, now a seven. <laughs> so you invested in him when he was a four. And obviously, you're a six, so he was grateful. <laughs> now he's a seven, but he still feels like a four <laughs> inside. <laughs> so he's going fucking nowhere. Renovate your arsehole. <laughs> Put a conservatory up your arsehole. <laughs> Get an extension. Yeah, a longer arsehole. That's, that's what a boob job is, isn't it? It's just an extension yeah. to your tits. <laughs> Facts with Adam Rowe there. Eh? Just an extension, yeah. You know what I mean? I do know what you mean. Yeah. <laughs> if you had a tits yeah. and extensions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> what? <laughs> tits, extensions, bigger. But they were there. Homes Under the Hammer were there. Oh, sick. Which I didn't know, because there was lots of Jewish people sat in the corner. It was like no filming area, because they didn't want to go on camera. Like yeah. proper acts, and they'd use those Dyson things. On the <laughs> 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 Do you want ringlets? <laughs> so you can't get me in boots, mate. <laughs> <laughs> You know, hell of skelter air. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, f do all this. They wish you away. Right, sign this contract. And you're going, fucking, I don't know what I'm doing. People, yeah, buy this. Pay for that. Da, da, da. And it comes out of your account immediately. And you're like, f that's, I've never spent that much money. And then, if, you, if you wanted a refund, it'd take five to seven days. <laughs> yeah. And then Homes Under the Hammer come over. Hey, you all right? We're from Homes Under the Hammer. And you go, hey, you all right? And they go, do you want to be on the show? And I'm going, I'm literally having a midlife crisis at the moment, <laughs> trying to figure out how I can afford this piece of shit that I've just bought. They go, we'll give you 250 quid. And you're like, can you please fuck off? <laughs> and they were ringing me every day. Come on, get on home. I turned it down in the end, but part of me would really love that. Is that the one Dion Dublin host? Would you yeah, have met yeah. Dion Dublin and you said no? Yeah, he could have gone upstairs. Stairs up to the bedroom. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh I regret it now, but at the time, I just made what I felt was the biggest mistake of my life. Yeah. And right now, how do you feel about it? It's good. It's getting there now. Yeah. So I had that year of lockdown. It's like eight stories or something, isn't it? Four stories. Four story house. Four story house. Dead old. Can you tell us what you paid for it? Yeah. What, what was it? I paid. So I, I wrote on my hand, <laughs> one, three, seven. That was my limit. Yeah. 137 pound. <laughs> <laughs> 137 grand and then someone bid 139 and I was literally like and then we're like 140 and I was just like fuck stop and my hand was going and I was like fuck off stop so I got it for 140 and now it's worth double and I haven't finished so that's good that's good but I've put a lot of money into doing it because yeah. it's like it was fucked yeah, properly. Look, I haunted. It looked like that ghost I, trip house that you went to. I remember you showing me. Oh, it was worse than the ghost house. I've seen both. It was worse. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But it's not now. You got a lovely little basement. I've seen your basement. Yeah, yeah. Your little studio space. Yes, nice. And never used it. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, oh, got a studio. Saw this. Thought, yeah, I can get a bit of brick wall in there. <laughs> right, that's done. You close the door on that one. Never go in there. And you've got a pink bathroom. Got a pink bathroom. Because you had a girlfriend and you went, you can have the bathroom. <laughs> yeah. And now she's gone and you've been left in the bathroom. Yeah. So we renovated it together and it was it was a blessing and a curse. Because yeah. it was great. We're like, this is going to be fun. I swear to you, if you want to stay with your partner, do not renovate a house. Go and live in a bin. It'll be easier. Right. So we renovated and it was really fucking hard. We were just covered in dust all the time. So we didn't want to kiss each other or anything. And then... <laughs> on the bum hole <laughs> and you then you never kiss a bum hole that's it like, yeah what like a nan like <laughs> <laughs> never get your nan to kiss your bum hole and never make that noise when you're kissing <laughs> a bum hole <laughs> <laughs> imagine it puckered up though like the Simpsons kiss <laughs> <laughs> so 
we we both sort of went right. You can have that room. I'll have this room. And then she got these pink tiles. She was like, I want a pink bathroom. I'm like, oh, okay. And then she's seen these pink pink tiles. They were well expensive. I was like, oh, okay. So we got the, this bathroom. And now she's gone, and I've got a pink bathroom. Yeah, but right, you're gonna, you're gonna eventually after you get over the heartbreak, mm. right? You're gonna go on some conquests, aren't you? <laughs> You're going to slay some poon. Do you know what? I think it's checked because I'm 34, as I said. When I was 27, oh, oh, I'm gonna it was four great. story house to yourself. Yeah, but you have two women on every fucking story. <laughs> That's Just too much. Going, no, have a, you have a little bit. I'll be back in a bit. You go and see another one. Like R. Kelly. <laughs> <laughs> face the wall. <laughs> Listen to some of my stand-up bits while you face the wall. <laughs> some of my greatest hits. <laughs> yeah. Listen to my bit that I did in 2010 about a homeless woman <laughs> while you face the wall. <laughs> and let's see what you get in your predicted grades. <laughs> oh, no. That was R. Kelly. It was going it there. That was, was R. Going. Kelly. Yeah. Sledgehammer. <laughs> A but level results. A level results. Yeah. And she sat back two years. So she's 20. Yeah. So she's 20. Yeah. She's doing a second B tech. Yeah. It's fine. yeah. 24. So I think it's changed. When I was 27, great time. Just, it was when like Tinder came out. Uh -huh. I was like, this is amazing. Mm -hmm. This is the best game ever. And we just, I was living at my mum's as well. So I'd always tell her that I was going to stay in other comics houses. And then come back a few days later, just covered in like body glitter. Like, hey, your mum, yeah, I've been at Pete's. She's like, have you? Okay. <laughs> so, and then now things have changed too much. There's about 800 apps. I think that people are more open to trying new shit, like licking bum holes and <laughs> fucking going like, oh, put kettle on, pour it on my tits. I'm like, well, I'm not into that. <laughs> Hit me full with an hammer and shove it up my ass. I'm, well, no, I'm not doing like it's very. Are everyone... you talking about a specific woman, Brennan? No, I'm not. <laughs> I'm not. Kettle tits, hammer bum holes. Yeah, 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 yeah. These are separate people. <laughs> if you type that into Google, it actually puts it up on a map. <laughs> <laughs> so, I I don't know if I'm ready for the 2021. It feels like I'm a dad going to pick girls up. Yeah. I remember when I was about 30. You know, you could just pick up other 34 year olds though. But then. They're done. <laughs> They're done in. They're damaged. I've just done a renovation project. I don't want to fucking clean out another fireplace. <laughs> I'm not. It's not happening. <laughs> no. Come on. Like, all right. Sam doesn't exist. Yeah. A 34 year old. Sam's gone. Sam's gone. Sam's gone. Yeah. <laughs> 34 year old comes up to you. Oh, yeah. Is it a man? I've, I've, no. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's what they all sound like. <laughs> got a babysitter yeah i don't get on with my dad do you want to go to a calvary and then, then adam, shag is, adam is not gonna say no to <laughs> and then shaggy me, nissan micra i'm 34 and it's massive it's the damaged micra? no <laughs> You, you the, Nissan, the, the Nissan Micra. You need to oh, keep the, trying the, to put the them fan. on. You need to keep going because none the, of this. The fan, it's like a pop-up tent. You, like, you can't... The thing is, if... <laughs> <laughs> if a woman is open about the fact she's got a massive fanny, yeah, like that, yeah. it's massive, right? Then... I might get to try some stuff that I haven't tried before. What are you trying in a massive fanny? Elbow deep fisting. <laughs> Well, like a gladiator foam finger, like yeah, uh, yeah, uh, yeah. Uh. You going in that hard as well, <laughs> Pepe Reina? <laughs> Uppercut it. I'm just like, you know what I mean? If she, if she's like, it's massive, then she, I'd have to be like, well, if it's massive, that's fine. You know, that is okay. Don't worry. But we are gonna, you know, have to put some stuff up there with me, Dick. Oh, some like, like put a lilo on either side. <laughs> yeah, put Add an armband. Out. Put armbands all about me, Dick. <laughs> And then she might be able to feel it. Are you in the car? Are you having this conversation? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All the meats, please. Um, <laughs> yeah, 34 wouldn't bother me. I went with a 34-year-old when I was 18. Did you? Yeah. Great. Was it? Yeah. Did you just ruin you? Throw you about? She, yeah, she was just, yeah. She was just experienced. Old. Yeah. That's naughty, that, as a 34-year-old. Because I think, you know, when I was like 27, I was like, I, the only limits I've got are legal limits. Now. 
I can't be getting with an 18 year old. I remember once I got with a 20 year old and she, she had fuck me tattooed here. And I went, hmm. on the inside of her on lip. On the inside of her lip. And I went, whoa. And then went back to theirs. How, and how does she show people that? Oh, <gasps> nice. And then. It's easier to just say it. But she might be shy. And you don't see it. <laughs> you don't see it when she was sad as well. No. Yeah. <laughs> Her dad's like, I guess I'll do it again then. <laughs> it's the thing that made us sad. And <laughs> so it's a Patreon episode. And <laughs> Patreon.com slash have a weird pod where it's often worse. <laughs> Is that the tagline? Yeah. Where it's often worse. So, and when I'd took my kit off mm. she went oh my god you've got a dad bod and it fucking crippled me and i've got i've got a granddad bod now mm. but it really i don't want that why it's getting more and more popular you know yeah. it's the old not, dad though, bod. it is they say that but no. it's not if you if you put me next to mark Wright off tower yeah who are you going for no but they're intimidated by him do you know what i mean you've got to remember what women are like Okay. <laughs> Please tell us, Adam. <laughs> Women want security. They really do. They want to know when they're in a relationship that you're going nowhere because they've been cheated on because men are cunts. Yeah. They've been cheated on 12 times by the time they're 22. So they want security. So she looks at your dad bod as like, I'm not going anywhere. I'm basically a physical icer for that woman. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> she's she, and she's invested in you because she's like that. This will do. It it says you've given up. <laughs> You'll take what you can get. And she's like, I'm quite happy as long as he doesn't go anywhere. I just don't want another guy to fuck me over. And his beginning of tits <laughs> say that you know if he does, and that's why, <laughs> like, dad bod ugly men have got the power. To break women. Because if you're <laughs> dad bod ugly. Yeah. Because there's thick girls now. Really beautiful girls who've been fucked around by all the towie looking cunts. Yeah. And they're going for dad bod men. And then those dad bod men, some of them are going to be assholes as well. And they are going to become lesbians. <laughs> because you can't get fucked around by someone you've stooped for. And then still be like, well, let's... That's another bad one. Let's try, go with stupid. the lottery. Let's keep going with this lottery of men. They're going to lose faith. Hebden Bridge in 2024 is going to be full. <laughs> just full. <laughs> full of really fit 22-year-old yeah. women. All just being like, I'll try it. <laughs> Cafe's called Bastard. <laughs> oh. well, I do feel like I'm going to... I've got that mindset. So a few weeks out of the relationship, still all very civil. We're sharing a dog. <laughs> shit. And, whoa, 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 whoa. Park the bus. <laughs> <sighs> you, you broke up a few weeks ago, mm. and the plan is you're going to share the dog. Share the dog. Right. Questions, if that's okay. Fully, fully go for it. Okay. Did this dog belong to one of you before you got together, or did you get the dog together? So I drove her to get the dog, but she bought the dog. So I think we own the dog. Right. How long into the relationship is this? About a year. Right, okay. Maybe No, about a year and a half. So that it is your dog. Yeah, she paid for it because I didn't want to buy it off a man who kept dogs in cars. Yeah. So she paid for it. We've looked after it together. I fed the dog, so it's our dog. Yeah, yeah. It's definitely your dog if you got it while you're in the same relationship. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hmm. So I went through something similar last year. Hmm. Broke up with someone. We'd got a dog together. Because I did the breakup, I tried to be as nice as possible and went you can keep the dog yeah. I mean you've got to move out but you can keep the dog <laughs> I'm trying to be as nice as possible the sofa's staying bitch but you can keep the dog I was so sad I said you can have anything you want and she took the dishwasher <laughs> I imagine some... she was like I want you and you're like that's not an option <laughs> anything else though <laughs> um, you, you, you do know Known each other 11 years. You do know you can't share the dog. You do know that. Whose idea, can I ask, whose idea was that? I mean, I think... <laughs> I think she probably felt sorry for me. She, like, going, we went, oh, the dog's mint. 
you can see the dog a bit. Is that not like what they call it? Is it a, a hook or something? It's keeping you in their life. Yeah. Yeah. We're going to be friends. All right. You are gonna be so friends. We're gonna go to family barbecues with the dog. We'll go to each other's oh, weddings. Are you joking though? Because I need to know you're joking. I'm not joking. You're gonna be friends. Mm-hmm. You're still gonna see that her family. Mm. She's still gonna see yours. Yeah. Right. <laughs> okay. So let's do a role play. Okay. That's okay. I am <laughs> a girl that you've gone on a date with. This is in a year and a half's time. Okay. Right. So you haven't got back with your ex. I've got my six pack by then. <clears throat> <laughs> <laughs> you got six lagers under yeah. your arm. That's right. So we're on a date. Yeah. It's our third date. It's going well. Yeah. Right. You're really into me. Mm-hmm. You're really into me. You're like, this could be the one. Okay. You've got to imagine that. Okay. Mm-hmm. I've been lovely to you. I've been through some stuff in the past, but I'm working on it. I just want a nice lad who I can settle down with. I'd really like to live in a four-story house, long-term. Pink bathroom. P- with a pink bathroom. Love a pink bathroom. <laughs> right? So... We're, 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 you know, I'm I'm open to licking your bum hole. You don't even have to lick mine. I'll have a go. Right, there you go. So we can lick bum holes together. The future's bright. The future's bum holes. <laughs> right? Not little known phone company. <laughs> you just referenced Orange from 23 <laughs> years ago. I did, yeah. Try and get a one-to-one reference in a bit. Right. So it's date number three. Mm. You've been talking to your mate, Adam Rowe. You've been texting your mate, Adam Rowe. Oh, yeah, yeah. And yeah. he's been like, how, how are you? Like, oh, I've been seeing this girl fucking, you know, I think I'm falling for it. It's going really well. Yeah. It's, you know, it is soon, but whatever. And I'm like, have you told her that you're still, you know, you still babysit the dog three days a week and, and you're still around your ex's house <laughs> uh, <laughs> every two weeks, you know, helping with whatever. Have you told her that? Yeah, you haven't, but you're going on a date tonight. So we're in a restaurant. So you've got okay. to break the news to me and I'll show you how any woman is going to react mm-hmm. any okay. any all women are the same <laughs> hi babe babe hmm? i'm into that yeah, it's going all right Sweet isn't it <laughs> um right we've ordered have we well have I've, you ordered I, for me yeah i've ordered for you have you ordered uh, it's big mac, big mac. <laughs> yeah yeah. <laughs> yeah i got it from that red bin um <laughs> Ordered it. <laughs> oh, that big Mac when yeah. you threw away. How much was that? Just a set of keys. Um, <laughs> That's me, mate. Adam on the top. <laughs> yeah. So it's about the podcast, mate. <laughs> <laughs> it was going so well. <laughs> um, right. We've been going on a couple of dates. We've spaffed in each other's faces. We're getting on. Yeah. Yeah. I, on. I enjoy the spaffing. Yeah. Right, keep yeah. going. Kids there, mm. and um, <laughs> I what spaffing is what a mummy and a daddy do when they love each other very much. Your mum and dad look like they haven't done it in years. <laughs> you were the last time they spaffed. Mind your business. <laughs> Sorry, babe. Babe, <laughs> I can get used to that. <laughs> so I've got to come clean. Yeah. Right. So put down your milkshake. I know that I said I'm a nice guy, and I am a nice guy. I've got a pink bathroom. Yeah. But there's something I've not told you. Right. Like on the second date when you didn't tell me about your kids. (laughs) That actually happened once. Do you remember the last one? Fucking what a knob. And (laughs) (laughs) so. They're not kids. I sponsor them. (laughs) They are kids, but they're not mine. You know what I mean? And they're on the other side of the world. (laughs) Do you get a picture every month? (laughs) I've got a pen pal, essentially. Names. Oh. Yeah, what, what, what are they called again? Mbemwe and Keith. <laughs> <laughs> In Rwanda. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, like, I know, like, how you look after Mbemwe, like, <laughs> every so often. We died, so we didn't do that well looking after. <laughs> <laughs> I've got like a little mum Ben way of my own. Have you? Yeah, yeah. Oh, what company did you go through? Um, it was just on uh, Facebook. Right. <laughs> right? Yeah. Cool. You could buy a litter of mum Ben ways. Yeah. Um, we called, we by we, I mean me and my um, ex-girlfriend. Okay, the psychopath. No, the other one. She's psychopath. No, no. No. The lovely one. The lovely one. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. nice one. Yeah. So we decided we, we were going to stay friends, and that's been going pretty well. And then we the one were with go- the massive fanny. 
No, no, that was the one after. Oh, yeah, okay. yeah, that 34 year old. Yeah. Yeah. So we. <laughs> one with the elongated nipples. Huh? That's the one, yeah. yeah, yeah Drag yeah. on the floor. We have a little Mumbenwe dog um, <laughs> together. Mm. Beautiful. Mm. More than £3 a month, though. Right. But also shits in the corner of the house. And you say, but you've been broken up for like three and a half years. Mm, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So what do you mean you've got a dog with you? Well, we just didn't want to get... You mean you got a dog together? Well, it was better than getting rid of the dog, wasn't it? No, so so you still share the dog? We still share the dog, yeah, yeah. And how often does do you see the dog? I see the dog like, you know, twice a week. Right. And is she there when that happens? Well, yeah, it's a bit weird, isn't it? If I just go and pick up a dog by a bin. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like if it's just tied up outside a shop, it's like, go get the dog. Like, I'm not. <laughs> yeah, I can see why. Mm. But it's only like ayers. Like, we high five. Mm. We go like, eee, mm. what's happening? Mm. And then I get the dog. Mm. See the dog for a bit. Mm. Do you know, like you and Mumbenwe, it's exactly the same. Like, mm. why, why are you getting upset? I've never shagged Mumbenwe's dad. But I bet. <laughs> If you could afford a fight over there, you would. <laughs> I'm just saying, you know, and then where his dad. What's his it? dad called? What? What's his, what's his dad called? Aaron. <laughs> Surname. I just want to Facebook and see see what competition I've got. Simmons. <laughs> Benway <laughs> Simmons. Mumbenway Simmons. Mumbenway Simmons. Yeah. And Benway's white. He was just born over there. I knew he was white. Yeah. Mum Benway Simmons. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, I feel it's getting away from my issue that I'm trying to <laughs> open up, open up myself to you. This Be is honest. A weird conversation between dating people, isn't it? And I'm just wondering if that's going to be a problem. No, no, not going to be a problem at all. Have but, fun. Go now. Go on. Go and get your dog. <laughs> But we've still got to get some piping hot apple pies. <laughs> Go and get your fucking dog. What's up with you here, babe? What? Babe. Don't call me babe. Never again. Mum Ben Wade. Don't shag here. Go on. <laughs> I don't, don't want, sh- want to. You obviously want to. I don't. You obviously I want don't. to. I don't. I never want to see it again. I'm going to go and spaff on someone else. Why are you being like that? I said spaff. <laughs> <laughs> don't look at the kids while you're saying spaff. <laughs> and that's how it's going to go. That's what's going to happen. Right, well, we're not sharing the dog. <laughs> That's exactly how it's going to happen as well. Mom but it is, though, isn't it? No. What do you mean, no? He's, he's not going to share the dog, so it's not going to happen. We are going to share the You're dog. You're not, not going to share the dog. You're absolutely not. Okay, then we're Comment there. on this video or, or tweet us if you, if you're one of the audio listeners and let us know if you think it's possible for this to not end terribly for everyone involved. Reverse it. Imagine she's had a new, like... Seven foot dog. <laughs> <laughs> Boyfriend who's like, he's not coming to get the fucking dog. Yeah, let's say she starts dating LeBron James. Mm. Do you think he's not going to be pissed off that she's seeing you every now and then? Nah, he's got his own shit going on. <laughs> Has he? He's yeah. quite busy, LeBron James. I yes. don't know if he's <laughs> sort of stuff. He's, I think he's a sportsman. Yeah, um, yeah, sure. <laughs> is he the guy? Who, oh, no. <laughs> uh, Go on. He's the one in the new Space Jam, he right? Is. Yeah, yeah. Thank fuck. Yeah, yeah. Can't be getting your cartoon characters mixed up these days. <laughs> I've already pod. <laughs> um, let's have a break before we, uh, before, before we, you know, say something libelous. Yeah. Am I about to get cancelled off not even my own podcast? <laughs> <laughs> You'd be the second person after Freddie Quinn. Uh, we'll see you after the money comes. I've had their say. What's happening, guys? Ooh, look at your outfit. Shocking. You look horrible in that. That's a shit t-shirt, jumper, dress thing, whatever that is you've got on. What you need, lad, is a fucking t-shirt or a hoodie from haveawaredpod.com. You want some official Have A Word merch? Go to haveawaredpod.com and get some then instead of wearing that fucking shite you've got on. It's horrible. You look a joke. Don't be leaving the house like that. You want a hoodie that says rat? That's what you need, lad. Go and get it. Haveawaredpod.com. We're back. Part two. Finn's gone to turn the aircon off. Uh it's it's so weird without Danny here, isn't it? Do, do you want me to tell you a thing on the way here? Because I've seen your lids, your fans, your yeah, followers, beats. your cult yeah. <laughs> people. Yeah. And I was thinking, like, because we've known each other for ages. I know Dan really well. I've done the shows. But do you know when you go, fuck, I feel bad. I feel like I'm in 
granddad's grave. Like yeah. you are. Yeah. So on the way here, I was granddad's grave. <laughs> <laughs> I got worried and I I stopped off at a B and M to um basically see if I could club together some stuff to look like Dan. So if anyone <laughs> like turns on the thing, they're like, Oh, it's Dan's back. Have you got that way? Yeah. I mean, I don't know how good it's. Good. Yeah, I've got it here. I don't know. How Why good. have I not even? I didn't even see you bring no, this no, no, in. No, I didn't. Well, for, for, for anyone who doesn't know, by the way, Dan uh, sadly last week contracted uh, the AIDS virus. Um, he got bummed. He's got AIDS, and we just we're, we're hoping he can survive it. Oh, it's ten days, isn't it? Yeah. You'd out, you'd out for ten days with AIDS. Yeah. Yeah. You get the NHS, the AIDS vaccine. Yeah. yeah. Track an AIDS app. Yeah. And they go, yeah. you've got to isolate. You've. Yeah. Yeah. Got to bomb people from two meters away. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Got AIDS. So I, I've, so you got some marigolds anyway. <laughs> I, I bought because I was <laughs> I was thinking. Wait, the the main things about him, bald as fuck. Yes. Are you gonna put a marigold on your head? Well, because your hair looks like quite static. Do you know what I'm jealous of you of with your hair? Because I like to think I've got quite good hair. You have, right? So is Carl. He's got good hair. Right? <laughs> no, you've got good hair as well, but he's got good hair. No. <laughs> so is Carl. <laughs> right. <laughs> it was a ha-ha joke. For the shot. For the, for, the, for the show. It made me ha It made you ha-ha. It was like on the office and he goes, you're not getting fired. You're not getting fired. <laughs> RIP the office. Your, your hair is messy, but it mm. looks like yeah. you've tried to do it. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? You sh- like, I can't have my hair messy because it looks like I've just woke up. Same. Like, if I had my hair like that, it would look ridiculous. It would look greasy. <laughs> it would just look like I've just got me off a pillow. Like, uh. but you- I mean, not far off. Yeah. But, like, do you know what makes this hard? It's like formal events, funerals. It's like, he's enjoying, his head's enjoying this too much. His head's enjoying yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, I'm like, oh. It is very whimsical. Ooh. But it's yeah. like, Come on. Because if I brush my hair, I look so noncy. I like a new nonce. Oh, oh, I like a, I've usually got one, but I haven't got one. <laughs> <laughs> it might yeah. flatten it down. So are you going to try and make yourself bald with a marigold? Yeah. Right. That one's famously red head. Well, it was that or yellow, and I didn't want to get into that. So, <laughs> so I thought, this is how you make it. Oh, inside, inside out. Inside out. Hey. I mean, I don't know whether Marigold goes. Not but, just a handsome bastard. I don't think it's going to go over you, then. Not reckon. Help <laughs> <laughs> like him put, out, lad. Like first time put Johnny on. No. We're getting this on. This is like me trying to put one of my shirts on. <laughs> That fit can me last a, year. Can we put a wig on this, please? <laughs> right. We're caught, we're sort of damned. And you've got my eye. <laughs> <laughs> Look right at the camera. <laughs> oh, we've got the wig, the lid wig. You've actually got my eye. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I got half my head out the window. <laughs> Come here, let's just fix that. Because it looks so... <laughs> Here we go. There we go. Right. We've got got the wig. <laughs> Dan's back. Dan's back. <laughs> We've got specs. Let's let's take the wig off because you do actually look a little bit like Danny. Do I? This needs sorting. Do we get some tape? I've got that. Oh! Because he always wears cap, doesn't he? He does. He used to wear trilbies a lot, but that's passed. And then um you look you look ill. I've got a non CR drive. <laughs> Brennan. Uh, I, I, I I if there's ever been a time the to button. stop listening to the audio and to just go and find this exact moment on the YouTube if you're an audio listener. Jesus Christ. Do I look like him? Yeah. What the hell? Sign up to Patreon. Come on. Manscape. Brennan. Turn the volume up. I, I can't see. <laughs> Mama like that. Mama, Mama like that. that. Can we just get a, a nice photograph of you? <laughs> yeah, we don't want to look silly, do we? No. <laughs> Dan's made a full recovery. <laughs> I'm out of isolation. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, it's so rare. That I'm rendered speechless. 
<laughs> it look good? I, I don't know what I look like. You look, you look genuinely you. like Gok Wan. <laughs> <laughs> get your kit off. Let's get down to Trafford Centre. I'm not. I'm not like you. Look like Gokwan with a beard. <laughs> you look like you're in Coronation Street. I don't know why. <laughs> Gokwan is the new like. Do you like when um, Daniela Westbrook's coke habit got too bad? So yeah, yeah, yeah. A different, different actress in, in EastEnders <laughs> to play Sam. Like when her nose fell out. Yeah, yeah. 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 It looks like uh, Kevin Webster. <laughs> is that like Michael Lavelle is dead? Yeah. So they've gone. It'd be a great Kevin Webster and Gok Wan <laughs> and stand up to the audition and gone, hey, listen up, everyone, I'm Gok Wan, but I can be Kevin. My, uh, my daughter's Rosie. I am Sally. <laughs> no, no. Oh, I think you need a new fan belt. You, like, honestly, if if I took a picture of you now, mm. right, like from the neck up, because yeah. obviously the clothes would give it away, and then a picture of you without this on <laughs> and put it on the internet. People wouldn't believe it's the same person. I'm very diverse. You're a very good actor, and uh, that <laughs> takes us over to your spotlight on yeah, the so, internet. <laughs> well, well done, producer Carl. Don't you dare take those off. I can't see. <laughs> these are my actual glasses, but these are old glasses. Look how fat them lenses are. Can I do the old... Uh, oh, yeah. you would. Well, there's someone in a wheelchair, would you? Fucking throw it on the floor of a lunge and fucking ride it around. You would. Do that, would you? Oh, my God. God. Wow. Bad them, aren't they? Wow. I, I could see through you when you had them on. I can see the wall. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, I, that is insane. Um, you, you, uh, <laughs> you, uh, you know what it is? What? He looks Asian because it it's it's pulling yeah. his head off. Yeah, can eat you Compose yourself. Got a podcast to do, Adam. Got a podcast to do. Um, you, uh, you got into comedy. Mm. Uh, be, to sort of facilitate your acting career initially. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, kind of. It was a bit of a misconception. I can't believe I'm a bit... So, actually, um, <laughs> I do... <laughs> so, <coughs> I was an... So, as a child actor, so I was in, like, Heartbeat and that yeah. as a kid. Got nonced off by... I was in a nonce episode. Oh. I got pinched. I, not in real life. No, 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 no. No, okay. No. Were you in... Really, yeah. I was in so uh, you've probably been on the telly when I've dreaded school. Yeah. Yeah. Sunday yeah. night, you've just had a bath and then I pop yeah. up. Yeah. Oh, that noise. The, 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 ding, the, ding, ding, the ding, end ding, of it would make me dead sad because it was like bedtime. Yeah. <laughs> ah, bees Go get to the in the bath like <laughs> you fucking stink of shit. <laughs> 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 Listeners in America like, what the fuck are they talking about? <laughs> Harpies was a TV show on one of our main terrestrial channels, and it was on every Sunday night at like six o'clock. Seven so to eight, I think. It was like bath time, wasn't it? Yeah, it was yeah, just yeah. before bed and school, school the next day. Next day yeah. To get rid of the weekend's muck. Go on. So, so I was on that, and then did did acting. Then teenage years, everyone was like, you're gay, you act. And they're all them women, why are you so gay? Yeah. I'd be like, is it gay? And I'm like, yeah, it's gay saying words. I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> so stopped acting. I then I went to drama school, did all that, rolled around on the floor for three years, and then left drama school and started, I was like, oh my God, because they tell you at drama school, they go, you, out of all of you, one of your work, out of the 30 of you. Yeah. And then I started working, I was like, I'm the one. Oh, this is amazing. <laughs> and I did some mint stuff, and then acting became a job, so I wanted to do a hobby, tried stand up once, and I was like, this is fucking well better. Yeah. I mean, it's less paid but <laughs> <laughs> it's well but it just cost me 30 quid to did go anybody, to, to go did to anybody in your class maker like make it make it make it nah. no so you were the one, I was the one. Nice. there was there was one girl who were mad who she started noshing off all the directors around london and ended up in everything she was in like charlie and chocolate factory and then she was in uh like all these like matilda and all that and then she became a Born again Christian. She didn't play Matilda, Imagine the though. guy you've no. got to suck off to get in Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. <laughs> Come with me. Charlie, and Charlie. we'll see. Oh. Right. So what was the biggest thing you've been in? Acting no. wise. Um, you've done everything as a stand up. You know, tours. Yeah. Live the Apollo. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I've done, I did a big like musical tour with The Who. You know The Who? Yeah. So I did that. I was sick. I did done some films. No, like no ones where you're like, what? Soul Boy. Did Soul Boy. It's 
It was I'm top. A soul boy. <laughs> I had to wear a vest in it. It was set in the 70s, all about Northern soul music. And here's me doing splits. I've seen a clip of that yeah. where you're on a bus. Oh, yeah. And you talk to the guys behind you and they think you're a bell end. Yeah, the, guy from, the main the guy from Line of Duty. Yeah. Is that him? Yeah. Martin. Is it really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Martin Comston? Yeah, he's sick. Oh, that's boss. I didn't even know that. I say I seen him pop up in the damn United. I watched that a couple of weeks ago. He's in that you know episode. he was nearly a footballer? Was he? So he had to choose between football because he was playing for Greenock. Yeah. And then, <laughs> I've just realised i got this on my head. And then <laughs> acting. You've just realised. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I just feel like constantly surprised. <laughs> <laughs> I just feel like I've got my eyebrows waxed. I'm like... <laughs> <laughs> and he had to choose, so he got picked up by Ken Loach. Do you know him? Who did like yeah, yeah. all them mad films, all yeah. them sad, like I Daniel Blake and yeah. that. And then he had to choose. He got picked up at school. I think they went up to him in school and they're like, "You seem right, you. You're a bit of a gobshite." And he was like, "Fuck off!" And they're like, "You're in. The, you're in the film." <laughs> and he's like, "Fuck you, you nonce!" And like, "Yeah, that's yeah. what we want." And then he had to pick, and then it's turned. He's so sound. Yeah, he seems sound. Can we um, play a little game? The, the reason we've brought this up. Is because Carl, like we, we've, as our regular listeners and viewers will know, it's normally Dan Nightingale. Uh, may God rest his soul. Uh, he normally does all the prep, and I didn't want to do it, so I asked Carl to do it. And it, instead of just doing the normal questions, we have got some questions ready. If we, we have, them. yeah, we have. Uh, oh, good grief! How's that looking? <laughs> Lovely. <laughs> it looked exactly the same. You're pulling don't, it off. Don't touch it. Don't <laughs> just, you just leave it. As, yeah, that, that, like it looks. You know, before I, I, I said, oh, if I did my AMSC. Mm. I, I, like he'd be jealous of yours. I'm mm. still jealous. You could of go it. to a funeral with that. Yeah, yeah. no problem. Yeah, no, looking no like Jimmy Neutron. You could do the service. <laughs> um, Let's play a little game. So, talking about your TV appearances. Yeah. Can I give you the name of the person you played? And you tell me what it was in. Do you, yeah. you good at that? Yeah. Okay. Uh, in what did you play, Barney Duncan? <laughs> Barney Duncan. Barney Duncan. Barney Dunk. Was it called something like? Oh, this was awful. Really shit. Was it called Life as We Know It? No, oh. it was in. It's a. It's a regular oh, TV. Oh, I know what it is. Doctors. It was Doctors. Yeah, I knew you were in Doctors. In doctors. I've seen a clip of that as well. I think I've watched your show reel. Have you? I think you know when you're hungover and you just end up like down a, a weird rabbit hole on like YouTube or something, <laughs> or like I'll Google my name to see what gigs are like on N24. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then you're on one, and I'm like, oh well. Click on Brennan, doing? and then I, I think I found your show reel years ago, and you were like rummaging through a bin. And yeah, the doctor comes dipper. out and is like, what, what's going on there? And you're like, she's starving. <laughs> That's <laughs> not right. Three years at drama school for that. Yeah. Oh, I'm so sad. Right. So oh, I was both. basically a scrubber. I was like, it was, a, I think they call them free guns. People are like dipping, they get in the red bin at McDonald's. Yeah. <laughs> out. I mean, Bird were pregnant and she was being sexually abused by a cult. This is in half an hour at 12 while you're having tea. <laughs> 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 She was being sexually abused by a cult on BBC Two at lunchtime. Yeah, yeah. And then I'm turning. So Balamori ends. <laughs> cult abuse yeah. starts. Dion Dublin, Balamori, sexual abuse in a cult. <laughs> <laughs> then, then to the news. What about when you played role hero? <laughs> hero. Yeah. You were hero in. You were a hero in a. On on the television it wasn't necessarily a, a television show though. Oh. Is this when I did an advert? It was, yeah. Pringles advert? No. Nope. Oh, I remember hero. your Pringles advert. <laughs> put it like. They were proper, like... All these I think I've seen everything you've ever done. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, <mate. laughs> it's really nice to meet the fans. <laughs> <laughs> Show me the tattoo you've got yeah. of me. <laughs> Years ago, watching that Pringles advert. I'd love to have him on my podcast one day. <laughs> Pringles like, cunt. What, what podcast? <laughs> There'll be a podcast. There will be. There'll be five before it. Or there'll be a really, really good one. Um, Throw it off. Shit at the wall. It was for like an X... I think an X-Man film come out. And uh, so it's like all x money, And then these people from Switzerland come over. Not meant to call them that anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I don't condone this. <laughs> so did you know that on all Pringles adverts, do you know how it... it Goes, how do you eat a Pringle? That way or up? I get about as many in my mouth <laughs> as I possible. I just get like four. And concave. Concave. Like a bridge. Yeah. Yeah. Not on any Pringle advert ever. <gasps> they do it the other way because they want it to look like a smile. Right. So they had a go at me. No, you do not 
do that. That's weird. Me. Yeah, I do it like so. It's like sad because that's what I'm doing when I'm comfortable eating Pringles. Yeah. Who's eating Pringles when they're happy? Exactly. No one. No one. Oh, I'm I'm in a really good mood. I feel great about <laughs> my day. Junk food, please. Yeah. So I'm gonna eat crisps out of a tube. <laughs> I realized yesterday for the first time ever that one of the reasons I'm quite fat all the time is comfort eating. Like I didn't realise I did it until I had like an epiphany. Because I had a big argument with my dad and my little brother yesterday. I'd eat fairly well all day. Like I'd had a couple of snacks in here when we were recording because I was like hungry and that. But I'm trying to do, just get a little bit slimmer. Because yeah. I got really where I wanted to be last summer. And it's just crept back up a bit. And it's not gone too far, but it's, I don't want it to. So I'm trying to just keep it a bit lower down. Because when it tips over, that's... And I'd, I'd had me tea. Uh, me, me, my lovely, wonderful girlfriend made pesto chicken pasta. Uh, and then I had made it with my dad and my little brother. And then after that, it was about an hour after me tea, I was like, I want a chippy and a McFlurry. I wanted a chippy and a McFlurry. <laughs> and I wasn't hungry. I just wanted a chippy and a McFlurry. What did you get from the chippy, though? I didn't get anything. I, I resisted it. Well but done. I would get salt and pepper chicken with curry sauce and chips. Ooh. I'm the same, though. Like, if I get in a row... I just want to eat shite. I love it. Yeah. Like, because I, I used I'm to glad be that that's my option because everyone else in my family would just down a bottle of whiskey. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but it'll still kill you. Mm. If you... Yeah, but it's not as frowned upon. <laughs> <laughs> and it's delicious. Yeah. Having a Mackey's in the morning actually just shows you got up in time for breakfast. <laughs> Having a whiskey in the you morning. got something about, were you? <laughs> there before 11. <laughs> but if you go down the offie... Before eleven, no one's been like, "He's he's got skills." No, but he's got a problem. He's <laughs> yeah, still yeah. awake. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you eat a double sausage muffin out of a bag, what a, what a guy! Yeah, he's got you're it. drinking vodka out of a bag. Smashed it. What a woman! <laughs> what a woman! <laughs> <laughs> but Brennan, what were you the hero in? The X Men advert? No, no, no. It's something else. What Same year. Same year. Mm. Fuck. Oh, can you give me a clue? It was Travel Lodge. That's not a clue. That's not the clue. That's <laughs> the clue. <laughs> oh, the answer. You give me the answer. I gave you the answer, yeah. Did oh, I forgot about that. Did Yeah, I did actually. And you were the hero, apparently. So or that's what they call them when it's like, because they want it to be like, there's the person that everyone wants to be. Oh, right. So they, they weren't, I wasn't a hero. Okay. I won't work running around in spandex. Oh, out. you were like the, the main. Yeah, like yeah, yeah. The comic book, the hero, the main person. Yeah, so I was like, I was the protagonist. That's you've done cool. a lot of adverts, haven't you? And you've done a lot of voiceovers for adverts. Done a lot of voiceovers, yeah. I did one advert, obviously. I did, well, two for Nationwide. Oh, I'd love one of them. Yeah. Ooh. Fucking Rowie Ooh. baggage. Yeah. Um, emotional baggage. <laughs> um, I nearly did another advert. I got down to like the final three for two different things. One of which was, did you see the Now TV advert with the bellboy in a hotel? No. So I got down to that. That was a lot of money. And another one was, um, do you know, in Tesco, you walk in Tesco and they've got like Jimmy's steak for two. I ate them. Well, I was meant to be Jimmy's steak for two. <laughs> and the guy who done it is this like really thin looking blonde lad. And his, his advert has been on the entrance to our Tesco since it come out three years ago. And that's the one I was up for. Oh. So every time I go to uh. Tesco, he's just stood there and he's got a look on his face that says, you could have had this thing. <laughs> for two. <laughs> Do you know as you well? You could have had this. They would have bought that for 12 months. Yeah. And, and then every it. year he gets paid exactly the same money. To just. Yeah. That's what happened with me where I think we might have been with that Pringles advert and it went a day over. Hmm. And I had to get, I got paid again. I was Sick. like, this is the this is a little phone call from the agent. Hiya. Uh, Do you want some money for nothing? Yeah. And I got free Pringles as well. They sent me, not the second time, that would have been weird if they brought over a shed load of, but I got a big case of Pringles. See? I'm quite glad that that didn't happen with my nationwide thing. Now, I don't know whether I'm legally allowed to say what I'm about to say. I might get a phone call from the agent once this goes out. <laughs> but I hated being that guy off the nationwide advert. Did you? Do you know why? Because it was stand-up. Because it was what I do. Yeah. And it was such a sanitised version of it. Like, I had to write a joke about banking for an advert. To to have that, it was, like, it, it wasn't my best work. It's yeah. the best way I can say it. So, like, my girlfriend, who likes what I do, has told me that that was her only thing. Before we met, 
That's what she'd seen. She hadn't seen me clips on social media. She'd seen that advert. And she thought I was a shit comedian, in her opinion. And there were so many people. I, I was walking on a hot water for like six, nine, 12 months. And I was going, what's that? And I, this is hot water. It's me fucking home. And there was times <laughs> where people were going, is that lad off that advert? No, I'm not. <laughs> I'm the lad from here. I do it here all the time. I've done other stuff as well. I didn't want to be that. I wouldn't want to get known for that. And there was people who definitely came to my tour show because of that advert. It were like, oh, <laughs> he says some different stuff here. I, get, uh, I think halfway through in the interval, you're just signing people up for nationwide. I think if you're going to be a stand-up who doesn't have this, you have to be anonymous in it, or like not mm. doing stand-up. You well, can't it's like, be a comic in it. It's like that guy Craig Murray who yeah. does Plusnet, and he has he's done it for about ten years. Yeah, doesn't really do stand-up anymore. But as soon as he goes on stage, everyone's like, Plusnet. Oh, it's bloody Yorkshire. Yeah, but he loves it, doesn't he? Yeah. But the thing with adverts is, you're never doing something that you want. Everyone's got a price. Yeah. <laughs> so, role play. Okay. How much would I have to pay for you to sort of advertise something like, or like trips to Switzerland for your nan? <laughs> I'd do it for what I got paid the bank advert. Four quid. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. What... I'm trying to think of things that you... All right, here we go. Mm -hmm. I've got 50 grand. Yeah. Here. Yeah. In a case. But the new Everton shop is opening. It's been redone at Liverpool 1, Everton 2. Mm. You've got to put that top on. Oh. No. Can I be there? I can't, I can't do it. 100 grand. I, ca I can't do it. No, no. You can I'll keep doing the numbers higher. Yeah, but uh, you could go to 100 million. You would do it for 100 million. You'd do million. it for 100 Don't million. Talk shit. You'd do it for 100 grand. I wouldn't do it. For I'd let grand. someone wear me as an Everton shirt for 100 million. I wouldn't do it for 100 grand. You do it for a mil? You'd do it for a mil. You'd be a millionaire. <laughs> you just, if you just lent into it and owned it, you, it'd be over in six yeah. months. 10 mil would be my price. What? I'm not sure I'd ever pay that. No, by a player with that. Don't play that for centre forward. No, <laughs> no man, someone's just standing in the fucking yeah. window. It would take like an. It would take a billionaire Everton fan who hates me to just want to have a laugh to make that happen. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's the only way that would Salad happen. Salad Mashiri, get in touch. Yeah, ten million. Ten mil. Not one. No. What about you with United? Same. I'm not bothered. No. I used to have a United top when I was a kid. Oh. Peter Schmeichel, but Peter Schmeichel with mint. So when I was at City fan... Doesn't matter. Oh, good God, are we going to have this debate? You're a Man City fan, raised as one. Is your dad a Man City fan? My dad's a United fan, but my granddad was a City fan. Brother's a City fan. So right. City family. Right. Okay, I can forgive that because you were a kid and your dad's a United fan and there's a connection there. And I got 100 million for it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I, yeah, I, I couldn't be in Everton. Right, I've got a, um, I've got a game. I want to play with your spotlight. Brennan. All right, okay. So I'm going to give you, I'm going to give you four categories, five categories. Okay. Do you know what spotlight is, by the way? Yeah, it's your, I, I've, I've got one. Have you? It's a, your act and profile. Yeah, yeah. This is what your you skills. can do, what you can't do, but, <laughs> but you don't like put that. what you can't. No. That's just a gap. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, like what you've done. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's all on it. Pictures that don't look like you anymore. Yeah. That's mine. Yeah. <laughs> so this is from your skills section. Oh, no. Okay, so there's five categories. Pick one. Accents and dialects. Music and dance. I'm sorry, there's only four. Other skills and performance. Right, so so accents and dialects. I'm going to go uh, immediately in for Old Faithful for this podcast. Accents, accents and, and dialects. dialects. <laughs> so on your skills profile, Brennan, you say your native is Manchester Northern, which we'll give you. Yeah. 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 Yeah, mate, it's fucking Manchester Northern. You also Northern. say you can do Liverpool. Mm. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, it can is we, interesting, isn't can it? Can we hear that? <laughs> is this do, you want, on do you want a sentence to say? I'd love a sentence, please. Um, so maybe say Pep Guardiola is a fraud and he buys all his success. <laughs> uh, <laughs> <on the note. laughs> I wish I was wearing that Shemichael top right now. <laughs> so, Pep. It's good. Not, good start. Not bad. Pep Guardiola is a fraud. Uh, and he the, buys all of his 
success. Okay, so you know you sound like them. Have you seen um, Green Street? <laughs> Not Green Street, uh, Football Factory. Yeah. Where they come to Liverpool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they stop in the middle of nowhere, and it's supposed <laughs> to be Liverpool. Yeah. It's supposed to be inner city Liverpool, <laughs> and it looks like it might be Somerset. Yeah. Right? And they get out, and there's, for some <laughs> just reason... Just like a group of them stood there. There's just like six scouts... On a traffic stood, island? ...stood in a field. <laughs> and one of them goes, Hey, do you know... Stanley! He's a fucking Chelsea cunt, aren't you? Yeah. It's uh, it's one of the worst scenes in British cinema history. Yeah. But as an actor, yeah. did they say they could do a Scouse accent? Yes. Could they do one? No. Were they in a film? Yes. Job done. I suppose. Can can you do it, though? Because no. that was quite cartoonized. No. You can't just... No. Because <laughs> I can do Manchester. Go Easy. All oh. right, mate. But more. Anyone can be like, all right, mate. I can be like, Brennan, give me a sentence. sentence. Right. So, if I was from Manchester... So, I'm going to take this as, like, there's been... You know, like, like World War Two, right? Mm-hmm. So, there was times where, like, British people had to convince the Nazis <laughs> that they were German. Yeah, yeah. To sort of... Inglorious bastard style. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? So, I'm going to say there's a war has kicked off between Liverpool and Manchester, mm-hmm. right? And I'm in Manchester, but I don't want the fucking mank Nazis... To know that I'm Mats, Scouse. Matsies, we call Matsies, yeah. right? So I'm going to just try and genuinely be mank. Yeah. Okay? So, so you've got to give me a sentence. So, like, say something convincing, like, I'd rather have Benitez back than Jurgen Klopp. Something like that. That's okay. Or, like, they'd rather have Benitez back than you, because obviously you're mank. They'd rather have Benitez back than Jurgen Klopp. That sounded quite Irish, though. Yeah. They'd rather. What's that bit? Rather. Rather. <laughs> That's the place I didn't even get into at drama school. <laughs> They'd rather. <laughs> Ra- rather. That's better. Yeah. Rather have been his back than Jurgen Klopp. That's all right. Yeah, that was quite good. I reckon you still. You'd rather have been his back than Jurgen Klopp. Even like. Shite, m- mate. More monotone. They'd rather have been his back than Jurgen Klopp. Rather have been his back than Jurgen Klopp. Shite. Get that on your fucking spotlight now. Well done. Nice. Now. Right, three categories left. Music. Now, is dance. there any other accents you can do? <laughs> uh, they're all like. Is there no exp- foreign ones? I mean, there's one that's Stoke on Trent, which is very specific. I a duck. Ah, duck. Ah. You just go. I a duck. I I'm duck. thick as fuck. I'm thick as fuck. <laughs> yeah. I used to. I used to be seeing a girl who was from Stoke. I years can ago. do Birmingham. <laughs> oh. I mean, kind of. <laughs> <laughs> just outside. <laughs> I was yeah, I was seeing some girl who was from Stoke years and years ago, and the accent is bad in it. Yeah. It's proper fit. But it's nondescript in my head. Yeah, I I didn't know what it was until you said it. It's like proper like. You can uh, that's that you can do it. You've done uh, it. Can you put that in a sentence? <laughs> <laughs> Will you shout me, mate? Yeah. Will you shout me, mate? Yeah. <laughs> but, I will, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> her, her, her accent being like dirty mm. sounded like I was looking after someone with special needs. Mm. It was, it really <laughs> took the, <laughs> yeah. Mm. Whoop. Mm. <laughs> Did it turn you on? No. No? No. Mm. Say something. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want the other three categories? Yeah. <laughs> when I'm single... When oh, you planning was, on it? Oh, right. When I was single. Oh, yeah, fucking hell. Right. I, I was sort of turned on by, like, stupid, ugly people. What? Not anymore, though. No. No. No, no you've bagged yourself. <laughs> <laughs> Got one all to myself you know now. I mean? Just for, like, one-offs. It was just, I don't know. Just putting that out there. What's, what's the <laughs> accent that really gets you going? Eh... Uh, in general, like in real life, yeah. Um, I I don't mind. Uh, I, I like Irish. Really, not yeah. Northern Irish though. I, Get yeah, your pants off, well. Noi. Yeah, I, I don't mind that. I like but the fiddly D well. one's better. <laughs> Get your pants off, Noi. Get your pants off. Let me suck on that little dick there. <laughs> That's Saint Louis. <laughs> Some people say I suck dick like me dad. <laughs> what? Are you serious? <laughs> right. We've got music and dance, other skills and performance. Other skills. 
Right. Brennan, you say that you're a magician. Oh, wow. Do you know what? So I lost my virginity quite late because of this, because I spent my teenage years fiddling with like cards and coins and all that shit. I'm glad. So when I'm, you said fiddling with cards. <laughs> It went cards. Yeah. <laughs> like my mum and dad would come in. What are you doing? I'd be like, I'm like, I'm so embarrassed. I'd be like, I'm wanking. Like, because you stack fucking <laughs> decks of cards and fluffy balls and all that. The first thing I ever did on stage was magic. Was it? Yeah, in the year five talent show in school. What did you do? Card tricks. Were you good at it? Yeah. I, I mean, I got them all out of a book that I got for Christmas. <laughs> yeah, that's I how didn't you invent any of them, yeah. Like, I couldn't do it at a wedding. Yeah. You do say it's one of your skills, though. Has he got an asterisk next to it? No. Right, because that, it... that means really good. But it's a skill. I can... For the audio listeners, he's doing some kind of hand contortion. Yeah. What's, what, what's happening to me? Got a long thumb there. Don't know if it long your thumb is. It's, I'm going to take this off for you now. <laughs> yeah, just delete that. <laughs> uh, we have music and dance and performance. Yeah, that one. The two different things. Oh, music and dance. Uh, it, you say you're a, um, ooh, a highly skilled folk singer. <laughs> Highly skilled. Highly skilled. Mm, yeah. Right. Okay. <laughs> okay. Cool. <clears throat> mm. So, you, you like because the good thing about folk is like they tell like nice little stories. Like so, if there's it's folk like I was on the bus. Is that no, folk? that's like blues. <laughs> All right. Okay. <laughs> I was on the bus. <laughs> do, 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 do. You know, I it's, love that. <laughs> <laughs> Is that an Elvis B side? <laughs> I was on the bus. <laughs> I, I went my sat down. <laughs> dun, 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 dun. I got talking to a man dun, 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 who owns a pig. Dun, 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 dun. I bought the pig. Dun, 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 dun. I have a pig. Dun, 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 dun. I want a farm. Dun, 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 dun. I live in a flat. Dun, 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 dun. The pig's taking up too much space. Dun, 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 dun. I'd like to get rid of it. Dun, 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 dun. Does anyone want a pig? Dun, 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 dun. I'm gonna get on the bus. Dun, 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 dun. Maybe that's why the guy got rid of the pig because he lived in the flat too. Dun, 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 dun. Wow. Do not put that on your spotlight. <laughs> <laughs> Songwriting. Uh, you're actually a skilled singer songwriter as well, Taz. Yeah, I used to be in bands and stuff. Yeah, I Did you? yeah. I know you can sing because you played Aladdin. Yeah, I in did. A panto. I well, did. are you a baritone slash tenor baritone? Yeah. Yeah, like a rock. It says rock, tenor baritone, baritone folk singing. Yeah, yeah. You've got I, to that do is a it. wide. I don't know what. Like, I don't want to be like. Ah, Sing the American national anthem. <laughs> Why? Because you. Oh, some... like when they do it, like good. Yeah. I'll tell you this, and then I'll <laughs> I'll sing some. No, I don't know what I'll fucking sing. In the land <laughs> of the free. Do you know I was nearly a McFly? Why is, how long have we done? 33 minutes. Why has it taken that long to tell us <laughs> you were nearly in the Because it's weird if I start, I'm fucking 34. I was 15 then. I was, imagine I'm you still walking around like- You fly. Yeah. How? Like I was down to like, because it's a, it's a um, put together group, what do you call it? Is it? Yeah. I thought they were boys. What's it called? They are all boys. No, Manufacture. I thought they were like tight. No. Tight. No. Like Why a would toy. a lad from Luton and a- Boy from Bolton be mates. That's a good point, Dad. You know what? I failed to look into the yeah. geographical history of McFly <laughs> members. So that's why I didn't know. So <laughs> so here's the history of McFly. The main one with a big chin. Yeah. Blonde him, Tom. Blonde Tom. Can sing well though, but he's got a big old chin. He his uncle. <laughs> He yeah, has though, hasn't he? Yeah. He looks like the start of the DreamWorks film. Just, like, <laughs> <laughs> just a little boy fishing off his chin. <laughs> so he, his, his uncle was the manager of Busted. And he yeah. used to write songs for Busted. Yeah. So then his uncle was like, right, I'm going to start a band for you. So then he did auditions all over the country. You turn up with your little guitar and you're like, I, can't, I think I sung Wherever You Will Go. Yeah. You know that song? You're far good. That one. Yeah. Um, and you just show singer? I did. Shows? No, did. but like, that like was good. I like that brand. Well, thank you. Cheers. The calling, and then they whittle it down, and then you go to London, and then they mix all the different. So it's like a non televised X Factor. Literally that, yeah, yeah. And there's fucking loads here, and then I got down to maybe like the last seven or eight, and they mix them all up. You record some songs. They go, "You sound good." You swap out, and then they go, and "Goodbye," and then this guy who was the, the boss of the record company, now in prison for fiddling with underage boys. Oh dear. Does that make you feel quite bad? Because he didn't finger you. 
know what I mean? Well, he did. Did he? No. <laughs> <laughs> what a revelation that would have been. I thought he might have. No. Brennan. Couldn't, couldn't quite get that. But no. But, like, <laughs> the, like, but do you know what I mean? Like, I've seen pictures of you when you were younger. If I was going to fuck a kid, it might be you. Yeah. You know what I mean? I reckon I was very close to being nonce quite a lot of times. Do you reckon? Yeah. Well. By who? I reckon by, there was a, <laughs> there was, there was a man who, who followed me down the street once and went, grabbed me by the shoulders, he went, don't tell your mum, and then ran off, kicked him in the shin. That was quite close, nonsense. Yeah, Can that's you not quite tell close. the story, story? Which story? The, the story, story, that we're all thinking about, story, story. Kevin Spacey? Yeah. Can you tell that story? I mean, yeah. What's he going to do? People hey! <laughs> House of Cards is already done. Oh, we were dancing around this. I was in the fly. Kevin Spacey tried to fuck him in the bum hole. <laughs> True. I've known this for ages. You've been on this so many times. You've been in this room, and I've been like, "Can we do the the bum and Kevin Spacey story?" But in the head, not actually thinking we'd ever be able to do it. Kevin Spacey tried to fuck him in the ass. Do 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 do. Ah! Do the bullshit on them. Tell the story, please, Brent. So, Kevin, spread the space between your bum holes. I like the fact that you were going, can we talk about this? Yeah. As in, people are going to be like, don't be tight on Kev. No. He only tried to fuck some men while he were asleep. <laughs> and he liked it when they were tight on Kev. Yeah. <laughs> I'm all joking. Um, no, I just didn't know whether you were, were, were going to tell this out loud. I'm not bothered. This is the main reason I've not had my bum all licked. Because if anyone goes near there, I just think, is that Kaiser Sose? <laughs> <laughs> Never been said ever. <laughs> <laughs> so what happened? So Come I'm up. doing a play in London. You're doing a play in London? At the Old Vic. Mm -hmm. So he was the, the artistic director or over it or something like that. So when I started doing it, everyone's like, ooh, 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 ooh you're young, you're going to get it off him. Because everyone knew. Everyone yeah. knew. Like, I, wasn't, I wasn't 14, I was like 20, 21. Yeah. So you're going to get fucking Kevin Spaced. Like it was a noun or a verb or whatever it is. Yeah. Doing word. Yeah. And then... To mean bummed. To be bummed, to be Kevin yeah. Spaced. Yeah. yeah. Is to be penetrated in the anus with his penis. While you're asleep, yeah, yeah. yeah. Against your own will. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's a versatile uh, <laughs> verb, that isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> but that's not a nice spotlight. <laughs> <laughs> Other skills. So, we do the, we do the opening night, and there's um, a big press night. So, all these people are coming along, and he makes a beeline, which stands for bum. He makes a beeline for me. <laughs> bum line. <laughs> he makes a bum line for me. He draws it. <laughs> it's just an arrow towards my own anus. And he's talking to me. And he's like, oh, cool, you're Kevin Spacey, but I know what you do. And he had his hand against the wall. So I'm sort of in the corner and he's going, where are you staying tonight? And I went, oh, I've, you know, I've got a place to stay in London. Travel Lodge of sorts in my house. It's part of the advert. <laughs> you know. That was another night when I got fucked by Lenny Henry. <laughs> <laughs> Comfortable beds, though. Uh, <laughs> Twyman and Dawn French split up. So, <laughs> so he's going, I think I've got a flat around the corner. I think you should stay at mine. And I'm going, nah, because I know what you do with them Oscars. You put them up people's asses, don't you? I'm like, no. And he's going, you should stay. Like, quite full, you should stay at mine. I'm going, no, I'm good, thanks. And he leans in. He's like, you're staying at mine but in an American voice. That's not on mine. It is actually on the American. You're staying at mine. You're staying at mine. You're staying at mine. And then I just sort of grabbed his arm and then just sort of went under it like this and I fucked off into the distance, went outside to get some fresh air. And then Simon Amstel comes over and goes, oh yeah, you're quite fit. Do you want to have sex? And I'm thinking, what is this? <laughs> <laughs> and I went, no. And he went, here's a man. Just to, for clarity, you're not a gay man. I'm not a gay man, no. Although I'm single now, so who knows? Here's the thing. Mm. Right? Here's my thing. A gay man. Here's my thing. <laughs> I'm not gay. At all. Like, you've kissed men for acting roles, haven't you? Yeah. I, I know this is... But that's like me going, and once I was a murderer for 90 minutes. Like, it's no, an acting no, role. No, no, no. But I, what, what, I, what I'm about to say doesn't reflect very well on me. But mm. I'm just going to be honest about it. Yeah, yeah. I don't think I could do that. Kiss a man? Yeah. Like with tongues and that. I just don't think I could do it. 
I don't know. I, I know that. I know that's internalized homophobia from an upbringing where everything was gay in school and it was a negative. I know what it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I, I just, I, I, can't, I like kiss whoever you want. I'm just not going to. Right. However, for the story, mm-hmm. I, I might like Kevin Spacey bum me. I'd Would rather you- get bummed by Kevin Spacey than Nat Carl. Do you know what the great thing is about stories? I am I offended by that? I don't know. <laughs> the great thing about stories out of them is that you can make them up. So you don't actually have to get fucked by Kevin Spacey to be fucked by Kevin Spacey. No, but like, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there's an element of <laughs> truth. truth and honor. Yeah, yeah. But like, yeah. Kevin Spacey bummed me once. What? Yeah, but Kevin Spacey nearly bummed me. It's just as good a story. It isn't. It isn't. That story would have so much of a better ending if Brennan at some point had come on his back. Tell me I'm wrong. <laughs> I mean, I have before, but it was years <laughs> later. <laughs> so. Did you say Sam Lamster gave you a Mars bar? Afterwards, yeah. He went, do you want to have sex? I went, no. And then he just had a fun-sized Mars bar in his top pocket. And he went, there you go. That. Like he was a dame at a panto. Just walking around <laughs> giving out confectionery. That's weird, isn't it? That's weird, isn't it? That's just as weird, I think. I think it's weirder. Let's get him cancelled. Is that the only time you've met Kevin Spacey? I've probably seen him about... But one of my mates got railed. Do you bump? I mean, it sounds like railed. Um, he got, so he got. I mean, I don't know if he can say this, but let's keep it. Actually, it wasn't Kevin Spacey. It's just a famous actor who's won Oscars. Okay, but it's not him, right? It's Devin yeah. Tracy. Yeah. Do you know Devin Tracy? Devin Tracy. Yeah, yeah. From the Usual Suspects. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. He's yeah. <laughs> Devin Tracy. <laughs> One of, one of my friends, when we left drama school, very keen actor, and he wrote to Devin Tracy <laughs> <laughs> and some other people, yeah. um, Dean Fafelen, um, Ian know, McKellen, Ian McKellen, yeah, yeah, yeah. who's got the biggest dick I've ever seen. By the way, I've seen it in a play. Oh, I have was you so- seen Ian McKellen's dick? He got it out in a play once. He was in the play, <laughs> not just <laughs> 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 Bravo, <laughs> get out. <laughs> <laughs> I was sat on the back row <laughs> and his dick was close. Like, he's got a f- heavy dick. Yeah, I mean, like he a- has to, hasn't he? Yeah. Really. yeah. To play the roles he's played, he has to have big dick energy. Like a, he- like a burrito dick. <laughs> Fucking two hands. Yeah. So, my mate, Devin Tracy, writes to Devin Tracy, one night gets a phone call. Oh, yeah. It's Devin Tracy. Kevin's, but no, 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 it's Devin Tracy. <laughs> he goes, he wants to meet me now. This is at 11 at night. Yeah, go meet Dev. Love him. Yeah. Love the films he's in. From Connie. Dev Allahan. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, go on. Deirdre. Uh, so, <laughs> so he goes and meets him. We see him the next day. And he's a handsome chap, but he is grey. His skin is grey. Like, what happened? She, you get on with Dev? And then about two years ago, I bumped into this lad and he went, I've got to be honest. Remember that night when I went to Dev's house? We're like, yeah, yeah, Devin Tracy. Bum me. Yeah, yeah. Didn't bum him, but he fell asleep on the sofa, woke up, he's getting full Dev'd. Fell asleep? He fell asleep on the sofa. He fucked when he woke up. Yeah. And he went, I mean, it's got a bit dark, but, and then he's the one who the police, had, like, do you know when it all came out? Him. He was the catalyst for Dev going down in more ways than one. Are we going to get monetized <laughs> today? Remember, guys, <laughs> Patreon. Dot com slash have a way pod. Where it's normally more revealing. <laughs> <laughs> wow. That is a story and a half. I think that is the worst thing that can happen to you when you're just sleep, getting face fucked. Well, it depends. If it's off a loved one. And by loved one, I mean girlfriend Your and dad? boyfriend. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Wow. Um, let's have a break before we, you know, <coughs> say something libelous. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see it after the money comes. Lauren Patterson's in today. Let's see what celebrities she's fucked. Hey, listen to this. This podcast, have a word, yeah, is sponsored by beer52.com. And we have been for about a year now. They are our OG sponsor. 
And I've got to tell you about them. If you don't know who they are, they are the number one craft beer discovery club in the UK. What's a craft beer discovery club, Adam? Well, I'll fucking tell you, mate, okay? What they do is they help you discover craft beer. They send you different craft beers every month from all over the world. Different themes every month as well. You might get a month worth of South African beers. You might get some from Argentina the next month. You might get some from South Korea or something. All over the world, they'll help you discover the best craft beers that you've never heard of. And here's the best thing. Because you're a listener to this podcast, not only do you get a free case of eight beers and an award-winning beer magazine for free just by going to beer52.com slash word all you do pay the postage and packaging eight free beers free beer magazine and a little tasty snack as well and also it helps us out you support our sponsors they support us this thing can keep going we can keep the have a weird gravy train on the fucking track so go to beer52.com slash word right now and get yourself some bevies for nothing it's quite weird when we have a guest co-host which is, this is the third time it's happened, isn't it? Yeah, third. So we have Paul Smith, Freddie, now you. But I have to get them to press the button because the, the viewers wouldn't put up with me sat that side. Absolutely not. Just, you wouldn't like it Well, either. in the live show, when Brennan and Lauren are both actually there, I had to move his round because... Lauren Patton's here, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. 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 Don't press, don't press my button, don't press my button, mate. <laughs> Welcome. Hello, nice to see you. It's a live show reunion. It is. The number one photo from that day, you're not in, unfortunately, because it's Brennan's arsehole getting... I think I'll quite happily not be in it. I think I was sort of a, a safe distance away. Yeah. Could you smell it? <laughs> we were talking about this in the first half. I could smell fish. <laughs> and I'm assuming it was his arsehole. I wonder what a fish, what that is. What the fish you smell coming from your ass. Yeah. I think it's the hair yeah. being full of shit. I don't. Could it not have been the, the wax stuff? Yeah, maybe it was yeah, a fish, fishy, no, fishy it wax. No, before, it was before, it was when, it was it was your bum hole. You're saying it like it came <laughs> up like a cartoon smell, I like. It did, yeah. Like Pepe Le Pew. <laughs> <laughs> Floating towards your arsehole. <laughs> Lauren, the, this is your second appearance on the couch. It is. First one was yeah. just after self-isolation. I'm cursed. The second one, you've just come out of self-isolation because you've had the it. Actual COVID, and yeah. And you gave it to Dan. <laughs> I woke up to so many messages being like, you've killed Dan Nightingale. And I was like, what have I done? I'm in bed. Do you not reckon it's possible? I don't think, I don't think it would show up that quick. No, would I it? don't either. But no. I just want you to be the one. Because that's why the first, when you text us, and I was like, when did you test positive? <laughs> like, yeah, when you exactly? test positive a day after Lauren coughed all over. That's how, I, that's how it happens though, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> a day after is the, the day it's going to happen, isn't it? To be fair, I coughed onto my own microphone. He was using a different microphone. That is true. And I did have a mask on backstage. I was very good. I stayed well You did not it. come near me. I, went, I did body your charger. You were like, can I have your charger? <laughs> <laughs> I was like, don't breathe on me, but this is dying and I, I need to check Instagram and that, you know what I mean? So your phone was dying, Dan Nightingale was dying, and it's all down to you. This is why we don't let women in comedy. <laughs> Poison little witches that we are. That's the real virus. That's the real pandemic, isn't it? Women, women. in comedy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Women. Women in comedy. <laughs> you don't know how they work, do no. you? <laughs> Women no. in comedy. <laughs> Women in comedy. COVID-19. <laughs> um, how was it? Because Dan, we, we spoke to Dan on our Patreon record yesterday. We rang him. Yeah. And Dan has basically said, it's shit, but he, it wasn't any worse. It isn't any worse than he thought it was going to be. See, I thought it was literally just going to be like a cold. So yeah. I was expecting like not a lot, but I got hit quite hard with it. And it was like, it was bearable. I got through it. It was fine, but it was still like worse than I thought it was going to be. But I think because I thought it was just going to be like, oh, I've got a little cold. I was like, this is how I die. Is it the worst infection you've ever had? It's when you can't breathe. Because yeah. like you don't realise how much you need See, to breathe. I get breathe, like that going so upstairs anyway. I don't think <laughs> I'm quite trained for that. Right, I think that's why it. Freddie Quinn was fine. He's used to being out of breath. You can never breathe. You didn't even notice. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> He's like a fucking pug. <laughs> he, is. he is. Oh, he is as well. He is an absolute Please put pug. that right to you. <laughs> Freddie the pug. <laughs> With Freddie as well, though, it's like, oh, you lose your taste for food. And he goes, you meant to taste food. Oh, you get so much shit on this podcast. Like he's he's a a <laughs> it looks like he's struggling today, though, Dan. 
He's just yeah. sent us a little picture, doesn't he? He doesn't look uh, he doesn't yeah. look too happy, does he? You can put that in. You can put the picture in. Yeah. Just now. He's laying there. That little mug there with his face on does look like he's died, and we've now just got like commemorative merch <laughs> well, that, for. <laughs> that, that, that's him dressed as Mother Teresa. <laughs> <laughs> um, in loving memory. He's now maybe shagging in heaven. Yeah. 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 I don't know that we've asked you that. What? Right. Because we. <laughs> just every now and then she it's comes a stock up. Stock question we ask most guys. Right? Yeah. She comes up and you can you can answer it as well. Yeah. If you want to. Of but course. it is a bit left field. And you'll see why in a minute. Would you, if she asked you to, when she was past their prime, sort of like that picture behind you. So that that Mother Teresa, mm-hmm. would you have fucked her if she asked you to? If she asked. Yeah, I said that. Yeah. Yeah. Like and also it's the same as the Kevin Spacey thing. What a story! <laughs> Imagine well, if he got to do both. There's a reason I why everyone... Kevin Spacey and Mother Teresa are they, are they the ones? Yeah, they're the shiny Charizards <laughs> of shagging. I think so. <laughs> Mother Teresa, she never fucked anyone. Remember what? Did she not? No. How can she be a mum then? <laughs> Kobe. <laughs> <What's she doing? laughs> but yeah, she. Uh, I don't she, even think I'd do it for the story. I think I'd, I've not done enough worthy things in my life. Yeah. <laughs> and maybe I'm the one to do it. Yeah. But look how perfect her hands are. They're, they're waiting for a cock in between them. <laughs> <laughs> Please, God, Please. bless me with a dick. Um, Lauren, so, yes. right. Would you, would you find that interesting on a on a man if you went on a date and you're like, tell me something I don't know? And he shagged Mother Teresa. And he's like, I've goose Mother Teresa. And you're like, fuck off. <laughs> and then he shows you like a selfie in bed with her. She's like, eh. just doing a little yeah. praying stuff. Yeah. Like, She's like, eh. just on all fours, <laughs> looking behind. <laughs> oh. If you were gonna like, because the thing with fucking Mother Teresa, you'd think it'd be quite a, just like a gentle shag, a bonk, some may a say. Bonk. You'd have to be gentle because she's never had sex before. Nah, that bum her head off me. <laughs> bum yeah. her head off, and a, a clean off. Right. And also, you can use the robes to mop it all up. <laughs> mop it all up. Mop it all up. What, what, what are we talking about? Mop it. 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 Spaff. <laughs> Yours? Or are you assuming Mother Teresa's a square time? <laughs> yeah, she's <laughs> everywhere. Holy water, Holy water all water. over the job. Oh. <laughs> Holy water. I love that, like, there's one guy, right, and he's a patron of this podcast. And obviously we talk about the most ridiculous stuff mm-hmm. in the world. Exhibit B. Um, and we've obviously said some of the worst things that has been said in British broadcasting history over the past year and a half on this podcast. And he's been a patriot and he, he'd been a patriot for like nine months as well. So his like lifetime pledge was like 90 quid. And he said, I love this podcast, but Mother Teresa and Jizz is too far for me. Unsubscribed. <laughs> <laughs> come back. Yeah. I love if he's come back this month thinking that's it, surely. <laughs> <laughs> How are they still flogging this fucking horse? <laughs> uh, um, what did you do mm-hmm. in your isolation? Because you were just you and your dog. He fucking hated me by the end of isolation. Like, Why? <laughs> just because I was so needy. And I kept, like, picking him up for cuddles. And I got to the point where he just went in another room. And I was like, how bad am I with men that even my dog doesn't love us? Like, <laughs> <laughs> oh, that is quite Even my dog yeah. won't stay in the same room as us. Were like, you trying to fuck the dog? <laughs> <laughs> that would have been day 11. <laughs> 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 One more day in isolation. <laughs> and, uh, another positive test for you. <laughs> Uh, what, what did you do to pass the time? That's that. That would be my biggest worry. Is I would get yeah like a, a permanent migraine from just being glued. I just I be, think I was so like whacked with it that I mean you just slept like you literally like sleep your day. You wake up at midday. You have like sort of half an hour and then a little snooze. It was like being a toddler again. Just lots of snoozes and angel delight. It's just, just like a ten day hangover. Angel delight, pretty much. Sounds yeah. great. Yeah. <laughs> like where you don't have to go it. anywhere. Yeah. Because I think I've got a hangover from you know things being open. Yeah. And now you feel yes. you have to go. And I'm like, my weary bones. Yeah. I feel so tired <laughs> just going yeah. for a brew with someone. I'm I, like, Fuck I can't have a, an empty day with Sam. She will just plan stuff. Just fill it up. Yeah. What she, sort of shit? Because there's obviously fun stuff, going for drinks, going for food. But what's the worst yeah, but, thing she's planned that you've... Mm-hmm. We, went, we went glamping. Oh, that looked cute. Glamorous camping. Yeah. yeah, expensive camping. Oh yeah, <laughs> Tory yeah. Camden. It's five hundred and twenty-seven quid for three sheets and four sticks in Wales. <laughs> Slumming it and a fire. It's less glamorous than camping. Yeah, she was like, "We've got a bed. That's what you're paying for. We've got one at home. Exactly. <laughs> Every hotel in the world has got a bed and electricity. <laughs> like, yeah, no lucky. Yeah. What did you do then? We, 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 it was lovely. It was just yeah. too expensive for what it is. 
<laughs> like I'm glad that was that was not the way that was that was good. I actually enjoyed that, but like just every day, like if I've got an empty day, yeah, I I love just e- once every two weeks a fuck all day. Oh yeah, you gotta have one of them. I can't. It's just oh, you got a fuck all day. Should we do breakfast, yep. lunch, shopping, the big shop? Finally get that IKEA unit up. And then we can watch Grey's Anatomy at the end of it. That sounds good to you. It's like, <laughs> no, I want to do fuck all. Even watching Grey's Anatomy is a stretch for me because yeah. I've got health anxiety. <laughs> they're, cu- they're cutting open clots every five minutes. It's awful. <sighs> it's the worst part of being in a relationship is having to constantly be like, yay, what you want to do, I want to, hey. But well, that's the start, in it? You're what, six months in? Yeah, but it's more like eight years. Because it's locked down. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, you're like, like dog years. Like yeah. lesbian years. <laughs> <laughs> when they get together, three days later, they're like, I do. I do. <laughs> uh. Lesbians move so quick. It's so impressive. Some of my mates who are lesbians, year together, they're starting a business together. They've got a house together. What businesses? It's a cafe in yeah. Liverpool. Really? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Called Scissoring. It's not. <laughs> it's not. It's not. Welcome to the Sizzle Cafe. There's a cafe in London called Egg Slot. Is there? Yeah, and I really enjoyed when I saw it. Egg Slot. Egg Slot. Do you know, I used to think scissoring was like because your fingers are like scissors and you you finger the vagina and the bum all at the same time. <laughs> what? Two in the poo, one in the goo. Yeah, that, but like I just old. thought it was one in each. I thought that was because that looks like scissors, doesn't it? It, it does. does, does. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? I thought that's what it was. I didn't realise it was banging fannies for ages. That's like, what it is, isn't it? It's not bang. It's like smushing. Smushing fannies. Smushing, mushing. You'd have yeah. to bend one as well. Why? Because they're not at that angle, are they? They are, yeah. No, but you'd have to, like, kind of move this one up a little bit. Is your bird's bum all at a, left, uh, a right angle to a vagina? No, but, like, <laughs> so yours flat like that on top of each other. Pretty much, yeah. Yeah, but it's where you're going. You'd have to, oh, so you're going up? You go, well, you're just going in. She's laid down, legs in the air. Yeah, but you have to move this up a little bit. No, oh, just be fine. That goes in. Yeah. Right. Both of them are in. Yeah. And it's like you're cutting wrapping paper. <laughs> oh, you like actually do the snipping? <laughs> <laughs> I thought that's what it was. I realise now that I'm wrong. But it, you could call that, that. What would you call that? Fingering. <laughs> yeah, but that, that's just not... That just it's implies just one stupid, hole. isn't it? Do you remember when that was a... F- like, pe- like, people were like, Whoa. like, secondary school, they were like, yeah, fucking... Like two in the womb, one in the tomb. That like, was just ooh. the teachers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Now, which one do I press it? <laughs> <laughs> you can't hesitate with the buttons. You've got to just go straight for it. Mama like that. Sexy. Mama, Ooh, like, mama like that. that. Mama like that. Um. So you you were just sleeping every day. Pretty much sleeping. Could like it, but I was worried because I was coughing so loudly. I was like, I bet you I get fucking noise complaining. It would be just my luck. <laughs> My neighbour below us doesn't like it. And I was like, I bet you she complains that I'm coughing and I get evicted for having COVID. That would be just my luck. She's having a rave. Yeah. That can't be a noise complaint. She's a nightmare. She Unless you were coughing to like the tune of blue dabba dee dabba da at two o'clock in the morning. <laughs> Through the gaps in the balcony. Just like <laughs> spraying it on her. So have you got a knobhead neighbour? Yeah, she's just weird. Like she popped her head up the other day because her balcony is obviously like below mine. And she was like, what number flat are you? And I was like, what have I done? What have I said? What horrible things have... Because that's the thing as well. Normally when I'm on the balcony, there's nobody else out there. And if I'm like chatting and stuff, I just don't really have a filter. And the other day I was out there and I realised how clearly you can hear other people on the balcony. And I was like, oh, they must think I'm feral. (laughs) Like, they must think I am horrific. Is it a woman? Yeah. And how old is she? Like... 50s, late 40s, early 50s. And she's just a miserable twat. Yeah. She's got cats. I don't know. I can't smell piss. But then again, I have lost my smell. <laughs> <laughs> I, mm, you can't know you complain for that. My yeah. neighbours are quite sound. I always worried that my neighbours, where I, I live in West Derby in Liverpool, and it's sort of, the, the road I mean, is quite nice, in it? It's sort of like tucked away, and it's mm. where you would sort of, like next to me is a family with two young kids. And next door to me, the other side is like an old couple. Yeah. But like, I had an illegal birthday party in January. They, they did nothing about oh, it. Did we read Aurora? All right, what's, what <laughs> went on there? Just, it's, it's it was a hypothetical illegal birthday party. We, ima- we imagined. No, 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 you can't get done retrospectively. I mean, you can if you murder someone and then a few days later, oh, no, it was a couple of days ago, mate. COVID. Apparently, <laughs> Matt Hancock isn't being prosecuted because it was retrospective crime. Even though all crime retrospective. Were you grabbing yeah. asses like he was as well at your party? <laughs> 
Ja, hvor er det også Min current girlfriend. <laughs> My now girlfriend. Yeah. Big disclaimer okay. there. That yeah. was <laughs> My now, current now. Yes. Hey, hey. remember? You were there. Um, <laughs> yeah, like they, they were quite sound with it. And I play music quite loud when I'm getting ready for like coming here. Yeah. Like half nine in the morning. Got a bit of Luke Combs on, a bit of Jerry Cinnamon, a bit of Jamie Webster, something nice. like that. You know what I mean? See, I've got a mad neighbour. She's like min, but also a fucking nightmare. She's this like big Jamaican woman. she's moved woman. out. <laughs> <laughs> she's Come gone. back to me. <laughs> We're sharing a dog. And <laughs> so this, yeah, big Jamaican woman. Oh, we will come back to the big Jamaican woman yeah. because why wouldn't we? <laughs> but before we crack on, we, we've got, We've got someone who's more qualified than me to comment on okay. what we are talking about before. Oh, what's this? So Brennan and his missus parted ways. Yes. But they're going to stay friends. Uh-huh. And they're going to share the dog. Mm-hmm. <laughs> right? <laughs> now, if you, if in a few years yeah, yeah. You, you were to go on a date with Brennan uh-huh. and you'd never met him, you're not comic, you don't know each other. Yeah. You haven't seen his arsehole getting waxed. You don't know it smells <laughs> like fish. You've got no idea, right? <laughs> <laughs> that's the thing that's pissed them off the most. <laughs> but the thing is, I can't check. I'll be walking around. <laughs> yeah, you never know what your own bummer smells like. Gandhi. <laughs> <laughs> so would that put you off if you were dating a new lad and he was like three dates and he's like, look, me and my ex-girlfriend still share a dog. I see her twice, three times a week. Yeah, I think it would. Why? I think it would. I just, but this is the thing, because I always say, like, I don't want any baggage, but then I remember I'm late 20, single, and live in the north. Anyone I get with now is going to have fucking baggage on yeah. there. Like, absolutely. Um, but yeah, I think it would put well, me off. A dog's not baggage. No, but you're still but seeing it and you're still attached, attracted it's to attached it. It's attached to baggage. It's a luggage tag to yeah. baggage. It's, you, it's keeping them in your life. It's not, like you don't, it's not like you don't attract the truth. You've obviously had an attraction at some point, it's yeah. still there. You just don't want to be together anymore. She knows what your dick feels like. You know what a vagina feels like. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> and the new girl knows that, 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 that you know. And so for a while, you enjoyed it. Do you think, cause, like, because do you think that you can't be friends with someone who you've banged? I think you can't be friends with someone you've been in a serious relationship with once you're in a new relationship. Yeah. I, I, well, no, it's not that you can't. I just think it's not unreasonable for the new person to be like, I, I can't deal with that. Yeah. And that's fine. That's allowed. But yeah. I'm not not sharing the dog. <laughs> it's a cute it's, dog. It's, it's so unbelievably naive. But the dog's cute. Yeah. Yeah, but so is you your know? girlfriend. <laughs> <laughs> You'll have to treat it like a child in the divorce where you have like a designated pickup point and like a mediator who hands over the dog. <laughs> yeah. like. <laughs> like We're going to have to go court. Dog court. Dog court. Here's an audible thought. Soz about this. Okay. That dog at some point... Dead. Gonna die. Mm. It is, isn't it? Yeah. I know you don't want to think about <laughs> it, but that dog will be so dead. As dead as every dead dog is right now. Because I've thought about this, where right. I go, that dog better not die on my watch, because I will be crucified. Yeah. Proper. I wasn't even thinking about that, <laughs> right? But there's that. Yeah. So, first of all, you've lost the dog, and there's so many problems when your dog dies here, right? Mm. So many. First of all, you're in a new relationship, but the dog's dead. You're going to have to comfort your ex. Mm. She's going to want to comfort you because you, the baby is dead. <laughs> right? Oh, my God. No more baby. Right? That's what it just sounds like, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right? It's my next door neighbor. <laughs> <laughs> so that's going to be weird for any new partner. Mm. And then you, what, do you, what do you do? Do you just never talk to it again? Is that the only thing binding you? No, we get a new dog and share it. That's what I'm thinking. <laughs> Until the cycle continues. Until we die. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. But I think it's never in the history of the world ever worked. Yeah. But I think yeah. it could work for It you. will work for me. You sound like a 17. You know, going to uni, like, she's not going to fuck <laughs> anyone else. She'll wait for me. <laughs> I remember thinking me and my ex would stay friends and then I got invoiced for me possessions being sent and I was like, no, no, no. What? No, no, no. I spoke about this last I time. I this last time, didn't I? I got yeah. invoiced for my things to be sent back from London. Yeah. Invoiced. It's not his job to pay for it, to be fair. Yeah, but 28 days. <laughs> but this is the thing. I was like, oh, I've out alpha him. He's not going to do it. And then on literally like day 28, he sent the invoice and I was like, not only have you sent the invoice, you've done my pet fucking hate of sending it last minute. Arsehole. Uh, yeah. So it had to be paid that day. I know. I just sent it. I was like, have have my money. I'll Sh- put it on the tax. Should have sent him after dog. 
You'll put it on the <laughs> tax return. Yeah, I put it on my tax return. H- how did you get your accountant to okay that one? Yeah. I have a, I am Heart, my heartbreaks tax deductible. I make the rules. <laughs> <laughs> a moving van for your stuff. Did you say they were moving office furniture? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Exactly. Smart move there. Welcome <laughs> to Have a Tory with three Tory. <laughs> how to dodge 28 quid in tax. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, yeah, it's not it's not going to work that. But you've got a big, fat Jamaican neighbour. Big, fat Jamaican. <laughs> lovely neighbour. Nice. She's great. She's called Marcy. Marcy? Yeah. But, like, her boobs are... Like, she can fold her arms on top of her tits. Yeah. Like, proper shelf. That's a power stand. Really big. She's about this big. Shelf Just tits. all tits. Shelfy tits, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Marcy. Marcy. Lovely tits, right? <laughs> are they that wonky as well? Yeah, yeah. They're all over the shop. <laughs> It's like a ghetto pose. A tits are dabbing. Like. <laughs> How bad do your tits have to be if they're dabbing? <laughs> so, if you get in a good mood, she's mint. She'll knock on the door. She'll bring you around some rum cocktails. She'll make food. She'll have a laugh. But if you get her on the wrong side, or if she's just feeling a bit like a... She's just... A, sometimes she comes in the house. In your house. Just comes in. Yeah. She goes... Hey, just seeing what you're up to. And you're like, you sure she's not flirting? No, because she oh. wants to have a look upstairs. She's she's like, she does, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but she's big. Yeah. So it takes a while. The stairs are steep. But you go, you can't just come in. And she's like, ah, shut up. You go, okay. Don't and then occasionally she'll like throw her keys at you in the car park. Park my car. And you go, oh, okay. But she's like, that's the thing. You want to stay on the right. She st- throws her keys at you. In the car park? Yeah. And asks you to park it? Yep. Have you parked it? Yeah, yeah, of course I have. Why? Yeah, because she'll smother me with a giant shelf tit. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't want to get on the wrong side of her because she's gotten, like, the neighbours nearby have got on the wrong side of her and she makes their life hell. Yeah, it's wow. my she kind of woman. Traps the, like, parks the car so they can't get the car out. She fucking leaves stuff outside <coughs> their house, like rubbish bags and that. I love a petty bitch. She sounds like a gobshite. (laughs) She is. But she makes a great rum cocktail. Exactly. That's where they get you. (laughs) That's how they get you. (laughs) That's how they get you, you see. But I imagine, I've thought about this before. Them, it's the boobs that are the the frightening thing because they're honestly big. Do you remember Lola Ferrara? Off Euro Trash died because the boobs were too big. (laughs) I just wonder what her nipples are like, like Marcy's nips are like. like. Wonder. Dream. Just give her enough rum cocktails. I imagine they're like dinner plates. Yeah, they will be. How big are we talking? Like, like a, a, is one of her boobs bigger than my face? Yeah. Yeah! Easily. What? And like wider, like Hey Arnold. <laughs> what? She's got Hey Arnold tits. Hey Arnold. <laughs> <laughs> Football head tits. Football head tits. <laughs> yeah. And a uh, combined tits bigger than that coffee table. Maybe width wise, yeah. <laughs> wow. That's a big titty. Big double tits. I'm just picturing me as a tit like that. She, one of her tits probably Patterson. weighs what I weigh. <laughs> two Lauren Pattersons. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Could she feed her? She fresh? hasn't got double D. She's got two LPs. <laughs> <laughs> oh. I can't be dealing with dickhead neighbours. Nah. I used to have, I, I did a, a routine about it. I had Russian neighbours at one point. Mm. And they just constantly have a murder, but in Russian. And it's terrifying. What does it figure out, Dino? We have to have them. What the fuck do you have to have? What the fuck do you have to have? I was them older than food. <laughs> My niece can speak Russian. She's five. Yeah. Her dad is from the Ukraine, so she can speak Russian. Yeah. And she, it, it is terrifying because she'll come up and she'll be like, Who should I get that? And all she's doing is showing you a shit picture she's drawn. Like, ah! so her dad's from the Ukraine. Yeah. This is your niece. My niece, yeah. Is this your sister's daughter? Yeah. And her fella? One of her many fellas. <laughs> One of her many fellas. she's had throughout the... Like, she's literally done a gap year, round the world trip. She was married to a Samoan fire dancer. He was a Ukraine bear <laughs> trainer. She's done it all. Is she in the Wild Thornberries? <laughs> <laughs> a Samoan fire dancer? Yeah, yeah. Amazing. Right? Okay, the picture I've got in my head right now is phenomenal. <laughs> a Samoan <laughs> fire dancer. Do you know when they have the sticks and they're like... Oh, so he's not on fire? No, <laughs> he's not like... 
I thought he was like wearing something that was like fireproof and he'd set that on fire and then he was like da, 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 da. not like the stunt guys who like <laughs> 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 What a TikTok I'm, dance that'd be like. Boop, 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 boop. Right, okay. She she married a Samoan fire dancer. Mm. Are they still married? Only just like they've only just got divorced sixteen years later. She's not seen him for ten. <laughs> so she was married to a Samoan fire dancer for six years. Yeah. Whilst engaged to a Ukrainian bear trainer. Right. You do understand how not true this sounds. These all sound like characters on Tekken. Like <laughs> <laughs> One of them's a capoeira fighter. <laughs> One of them's a panda. <laughs> right, okay. So, what, what, how, where was she meeting these men? Is this a specific dating app for exotic men? Yeah, yeah. In it, what's no. it called? It's called Life. <laughs> so, what happened is she was working on the cruise ships as a dancer. Yeah. So she met the Samoan fire dancer. Mm -hmm. Then that happened. Yeah. Then he m moved over here and then got deported because he couldn't get a visa. Yeah. So they went, oh, should we just leave Cause it? Because he, he's not got enough caps doing <laughs> fire dancing yeah. in the World Cup. I know, yeah, he's also like always on fire. So yeah. like it's a bit of a safety fire hazard. Yeah, 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 yeah. Go yeah. back to Samoa. Yeah. And then she was in the circus, worked in the circus. This sounds like, do you know when comedians do like a new routine and you go, bullshit. Yeah. And then I got off the bus. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Honestly, God, my sister was in the circus for years and years As, and years. Uh, Loads of different stuff. So she was like a ballet dancer on like, like dancing around on like light bulbs and all that. And then she was like a, a magician's assistant. And then she was like, do you know when they do the silks and they fucking come down yeah. from the ceiling? All of them things. Right. And, and then, that's where she met the Ukrainian bear trainer. Yeah. Because, you know, there would be a Ukrainian bear trainer in the circus. He had a bear. He, and he trained had a it. Tiger. <laughs> but he couldn't train that. No, we could train it, <laughs> but bear, like Ukrainian tiger trainer, but Ukrainian bear trainer. Bear. Yeah. yeah, don't go home to your family Pathetic with that shit. Job. What are you doing? Training tigers. You'll fucking, you'll shit, you Yevgeny. 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 Yevgeny, you'll shit. You'll you train bears like grandpa, you like great grandpa. <laughs> not train tigers. No, no, not in my house. Not while I'm paying rent. <laughs> Fuck you, Yevgeny. That's Andrei Shevchenko, isn't it? <laughs> Is she still with that guy? Yeah. Kind on of. On and off. Yeah. Yeah, because he's in a traveling circus, isn't he? Well, not anymore, but I don't know what you do with a bear at the end. You can't scrap it. What does he do now? He just, like, works on boats and that. <laughs> <laughs> what does he do on the boat? Just cleans it, does DIY. You can't go from training bears nah. to fucking cleaning boat Boats. windows. <laughs> Some people just want to settle down. Because he's definitely the guy on the board who's like, I used to train bears. And everyone's like, of course you fucking did. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Of course you did your gobshite. <laughs> I used to own the bear. Where does, oh, your, right. where does your sister live? She lives in Mallorca. <laughs> <laughs> Is she fictional? I don't have a sister. Does she go to another school? <laughs> so, and her daughter lives with her. Yeah. Right? So, your daughter... Is, My sister's daughter. Yeah, your sister's daughter yeah. is half English, half Ukrainian... But sort of half Spanish as well. So but, she's three halves. Yeah. <laughs> she's three halves of mm. the same thing. She speaks fluent English. Yeah. English her first language. Yeah. Yeah. She Spanish speaks Spanish. And Russian. Yeah. And her dad is a bear trainer. Ex, or was. Ex bear trainer. Ex bear trainer. Yeah. And now he's a boat cleaner. <laughs> now he's a boat cleaner. <laughs> <laughs> you know that day in like year four of school where you had to go in and tell everyone about your family <laughs> and everyone's like she's chatting shit you're chatting shit mate yeah all those Mallorcans you're chatting shit mate you're fucking talking nonsense mate what imagine have they lived in London for like quite a bit of their life that was meant to be Mancunian Meh. It was meant to be. <laughs> it meant to, meant to be, sorry. Yeah. I, have you got any family members that are exotic like this, Lauren? What does your sister do? My sister's a teacher. Um, she teaches people how to train them. <laughs> yes. What does she teach? Kids. <laughs> <laughs> Is she a primary teacher? Like little kids, yeah, primary. Yeah. But, yeah. She's have you only got one sibling? One sibling. And you? And a brother. What's he do? He's a cage fighter. <laughs> 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 <Just so cool. laughs> Um, he, he just works a normal job. That sounds ominous because you won't tell us what it is. Do you not think, oh, do you think this is the bit where I'd start? 
holding my cards close to my chest. <laughs> <laughs> what's, what's his job? Just works at the Lowry Theatre doing like outreach to kids that are poor. Oh, that's nice. And offering them tickets and stuff. Yeah, yeah, to the bear fighting. <laughs> <laughs> my sister's Chester's animal got circus. A bear and a tiger going spare. Anyone wants to fucking train them? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, it, it takes a lot for it to be me that can't keep up with the fucking nonsense on this podcast. You're. Well, hmm. This is why I'm allowed in once a year. <laughs> yeah. How, how have you got so many stories? Like, the first time you were on here, both of you, by the way. Yeah. Two of the most popular guests we ever had. It's why we asked you to do live shows. It's why you're one of the very few people we've ever asked to come back on for, like, a second time. We love you here. Well, how have you done a full first appearance on the podcast and not mentioned that you once licked Ellie Gould and out? <laughs> then you reveal that on the live show. And everyone's like, what? And then you come in and go, uh, by the way, Kevin Spacey says, fuck me. Actually did face fuck me, mate, while he was asleep. <laughs> <laughs> My sister was in the circus. Whoa, whoa, whoa. She was shagging a UK Devin and a bear fighting her. And a Samoan fight. And a Samoan fire dancer. Anyway, what's for lunch? <laughs> but imagine I came on the first time and you're like, how's things? And I just spaff it all. All out. You're like, are you, you all right? Are you saving more? Have you got more? Probably. I've lived a life. I love I'm, it. I mean, I'm trying to think what else. Were you ever in the circus? So <laughs> when I was a kid. What? <laughs> My family were like in the circus <laughs> a bit. You're talking shit. I'm whatever. not talking shit. <laughs> <laughs> so my dad used to. I was a baby. I'm not anymore. Maybe I can't remember. So were you ever in the circus? Yeah. <laughs> Obviously, I think my sister just decided to have her own accord. It's a family tradition. So my mum didn't do out lazy. Yeah, but my they dad. Often are. <laughs> my dad, my brother, <laughs> my sister. And then I was young, like two. Yeah. So I'd go and they'd just put an outfit on me and I'd run around and that, yeah. that was my trick. I love that in the circus. Yeah. <laughs> Fuck, that's oh, where I go. Yeah. It's the brother now, Ken. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Is that midget? Nice. <laughs> two year old boy. Can't say midget anymore. Is that a, what did you say? Vertically challenged. Vertically challenged. Yeah, but this was the page. early 90s. Oh. You could be like, midget. Yeah. Pokemon. <laughs> <laughs> It's the Pokemon. <laughs> <laughs> so my sister used to do like acrobatics. Yeah. Get a leg behind her head and all that. Mm -hmm. And then. I wonder how she got so many men. <laughs> 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 and then my brother did a thing called Diablo. Oh, I used to have one of those. Good yeah. Aren't they? What's a Diablo? On like the string. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, and you throw yeah. it up and you start going, way. Yeah. It's like if you're a kid and you've got no friends, you get given one of those. Yeah. Is I it like a, a bat and ball <laughs> on a string? Kind, kind of, but more of. impressive. Yeah. So like, imagine like a roll it <laughs> along the string. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. You fucking hit the dab when it's in the air. If anyone's listening to this audio, yeah, they ain't got a fucking clue what I'm doing. Yeah. I'm just like, it's like this. It's it's impressive though. If you are listening oh to the my audio. God. Whoa, <laughs> bloody oh, stop. Wow. Oh, wow. <laughs> wow. Whoa. Oh. Whoa. Well worth the, the mission. Yeah, YouTube. That drama slash school training was part. not wasted. <laughs> 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 and then my dad was a juggler. So he was he was worked in a battery factory and he was a juggler. <laughs> a battery factory. Then he never dropped a fucking battery. <laughs> never once in his life. He's like, wait, 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 wait. Do you know how much of a slam your dad's a juggler and makes batteries <laughs> sounds? A battery factory. <laughs> Who do your dad drops batteries? <laughs> your dad's invented all of his jobs, by the way, when he was lit. He's definitely a drug dealer. Oh, work in a battery factory. Yeah. Oh, I'm a juggler in the surface. <laughs> how many balls you do? Uh, just four. I think, four. I think he was a drug dealer. What did he juggle? Was Ball, he just balls and clubs? Ball, balls and clubs. Yeah. What's club? What clubs? Clubs like juggling clubs. They look like pins. Don't yeah, they're they? like, yeah, bowling like bowling balls. Oh, they're bowling pins. Yeah, yeah. Couldn't he do anything bigger? <laughs> he's, he's not like Steve Royal where he's chucking guitars up. <laughs> right. I mean, he probably could. I feel like if I went to circus and your dad was there <laughs> with just some balls, I'd be fuming. It was the 90s. Circuses then were literally just like, oh, he's got a red nose, and then you go home. I've that seen The Greatest Showman. That was years ago. They had everything there. Yeah, but bearded ladies weren't allowed in the 90s. <laughs> <laughs> but like, it's just not. I need to see someone juggling on like monster trucks or something, or cars. <laughs> Have you ever been Cirque du Soleil? Yeah. I've never. Oh my God. It's They're always juggling silly. monster trucks, aren't they? <laughs> I just want them to juggle something other than something that I can't juggle. Juggle balls. anything. You a ball. Juggle. You can't juggle balls. I can juggle balls. No, you can't. I can. No, you can't. No, I can. Uh, I've got packets of crisp. 
Yeah, go on. Two. No. That, that's not juggling. That's passing from hand to hand. Freeze minimums. And you can catch. <laughs> Sponsored by Poppets. I can do it with two. That's not that's that's it's not juggling. Not a juggling. <laughs> that's a production line. Can you do that? Yeah. Again. Oh dear listeners smashing it. Oh you're really bad at that. You're bad at it? Like there was there was finesse to mine. I feel like I've just walked into like bottom set. <laughs> <laughs> Can you juggle your chocolate? <laughs> <laughs> Basically, how many, my balls, can, how many balls can your dad play with at once? <laughs> well, it was me, and my brother. <laughs> Is it just three? No, we can do that five. <laughs> that would be shit. Five? No, just you that going. <laughs> three balls would be so shit. So, what did your mum do? Nothing. No, just looked after us. Right, and you were running around. Ah! That yeah. was you. running around. And your sister? Leg behind the head. Yeah, and your brother? Uh, Diablo. Okay. So what my sister would do, leg behind the head, fire out the juggling balls. My dad would catch them. He'd throw them onto the Diablo. I'd pick them all up. Where did you fire the juggling balls from? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> no, <laughs> did she? she Ping pong fire. show. <laughs> I thought you meant she was sticky Vicky in the juggling balls. <laughs> yeah, Manchester's own. <laughs> so were you your own circus, like your family? No, we didn't just like door to door. <laughs> So there was other people in the circus. Right, right. I think it was called something like Circus Sensible. <laughs> it circus fun. Sensible. And yeah. then, we don't want to juggle anything but balls. Nice and sensible here. Make sure no one gets hurt. The no. man who used to run it, Clive. Right. Oh, that is that is the showman of Circus Sensible, isn't it? He sounds exotic as fuck it, him. Clive from the Circus Sensible. I've seen him. <laughs> no, this is CBB's lad. You're talking shit. <laughs> Swear to God. Google Circus Sensible. You'll see it. <laughs> or Clyde, it might have been. Clive or Clyde. Yeah. Right. I seen him in a park about two months ago. And he was doing, do you know when you get like weird noncy men and he was doing them big bubbles that you put kids in? Yeah. And you're like, what are you doing with them kids and them bubbles? Yeah. You're blowing them back to your house. Yeah. And that's that's what he does now. He just blows. Ashton on the line? Yeah. Yeah. Exists. So was sensible. it just in Ashton as well? It didn't travel around. Yeah, it went to do went to different places. Oh, <laughs> were you about to say Didsbury? <laughs> <laughs> went to Didsbury, Charlton, Berry. We played everywhere. It's got plates. We did a lot. It's got plates on sticks as well. That was spinning a plate. plates. I forgot about them. Fire one there. It sounds <laughs> like the shit of circus in the world. Guess Clyde on the podcast. Three <laughs> sticks. Couple of plates. Your dad's there. Wow. Do you want this? Three. Three balls. But it's circus sensible, so your the plates are paper. <laughs> your mouse wants to be looking after you, but you're just doing laps. <laughs> <laughs> your mouse's like, okay. Is my family weird? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I've only just realised now, because it's not. It's normal, innit? Your, whatever your family do. Yeah, yeah. Normal. <laughs> not normal. Am I a gypsy? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'll fucking fight ya. Yeah. We used to do those videos oh. to other circuses. <laughs> <laughs> to know there's like you listen here now you don't come asking on the line with no fucking big tent Brennan what someone's left a review here what game is Bash the Bear Bash, Bash the Bear yeah I really enjoyed Bash the Bear someone commented on what on Circus Sensible I, I thought, this was years ago decades yeah. ago sounds interesting Bash the Bash Bear Bash the Bear mm. I feel like I'm going to have an aneurysm I feel I need to get CBT <laughs> Find yeah. out what happened. Did you think it was normal to grow up in a circus? I think it was what? not normal. Am I, being, am I being insane here? No, absolutely no. not. Did you grow up in a circus? I didn't grow up in a circus. No. I, knew, I grew up in Newcastle. You won him so. <laughs> can, can you just weigh in? Mm -hmm. Can you ask him a question? Can you just... Because I feel like I'm being out of order for being like, your family are insane. I feel like I'm putting too much pressure on you. I mean, I, f I feel triggered. <laughs> mm. And I'm going to go back cannon? to the... <laughs> I don't know what, I can't remember what else there was. Maybe someone doing like a human pyramid. Someone just stood there, your mouth. <laughs> yeah. like, what? <laughs> um, what else? It's maybe where I got my love of magic from. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 You've always been a performer, haven't you, Bren? Always. Always. Yeah. Always. You're a circus kid. 
This is my life. I flopped out my mum's fanny. Flopped? Yeah. Third kid. Oh. Fell out. Fired out of a cannon. <laughs> Fired out of a cannon. That's when I knew. <laughs> <laughs> Came out with an evil Knievel hat on. Holding two balls. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Dad. I then see the one you've got. <laughs> Born into the stuff there back then. <laughs> That's what, what he talent. Did. <laughs> so I came out with mum, in yeah. straight into the circus. Mm. Then became a child actor in Heartbeat. Got non stuff in Heartbeat. <laughs> called gay for about twenty years. Stand up. Now podcaster. Yeah. That's my life. Yeah. In six parts. Wow. Can we get your life history? Like, just because I feel weird now. I feel like I'm from scum. <laughs> okay. Uh, so I, uh, I was sunroofed out my mum. Oh. <laughs> right. Four operations or six, can't remember, on the eye. None of them worked. Yeah. Fucked it even worse than it was, to be honest. Uh, went to school mm-hmm. for a bit. I did quite well at school. Um, Famously. Did really well at school. Famously? Yeah. On this podcast, yes. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I thought you were on like the big brown plaque. Do you know at <laughs> school where like someone's done 100 meters quick? Um, yeah, well, our school was a sports college, so I fit right in. You know what I mean? Went straight to the top of sports, but thought, you know what? I'm going to focus on my academia, then mm. fuck that off. Uh, got into uni, lasted about six days. Uh, left to do stand up. Never really looked back. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. I've no had like, the, the odd bar job, worked in a call center for five days as well. Right, Lauren, please come up with something weird in your life story now. We need it in a six-point plan. Right. There's a lot of right. alcoholism that I skipped over there. As well. <laughs> See your fellow gypsy. Welcome to the game. So we've got born, relatively normal up to eighteen. Then I started stand up at eighteen. Oh no, I was in Tracy. I was an extra in Tracy Beaker. Do you know this story? No. No. <laughs> right. So obviously, because I look like a fetus, I used to always get like the phone calls being like, "Do you want to come play a nine-year-old?" And I was like, "Okay, it's the benefit of not having tits." <laughs> <laughs> And that then, is the benefit of not having tits. Yeah. I always get it. Exactly. <laughs> what a film. Well, the benefit of not having tits. Yeah. Feel, it sounds like a, like a, Will, a Will Smith film. A Will Smith <laughs> film? Yeah, it's like yeah. a pursuit of happiness. Yeah, It's a prequel to that. The perks of being a wallflower. The benefit, the benefit of, of not having tits. tits. It's just an hour of me crying and then 20 minutes of <laughs> playing a child. I'm making that DVD cover <laughs> as we speak. Um, okay, so how old were you when you were in Tracy Beaker? 18. As a nine-year-old? Well, I think I was playing like a 14-year-old. Right, okay. But I got like, it was like the Tracy Beaker spin-off or something that films up Newcastle. And I got the phone call and they were like, oh, we've got, oh, so I wasn't just an extra. You'll appreciate this, Brennan. I was a walk-on part. <gasps> oh, so that's like one above extra. Like What's they, the difference? They give you a It's like a middle 15. It's go from open spot to middle 15. Yeah. That is it. You go from being like nameless scum to like, you look cold. Would you like a jacket? And you're like, mm, yes, please. Um, so I got the phone call. <laughs> what a job. <laughs> <laughs> yes, please. Yes, please. <laughs> so they were like it's playing a mugger like it'll just be like sort of a half day's work and I was like yeah yeah brilliant and I'd done like extras work before and I know it's a long day so I turned up obviously like joggers and hoodie like because I knew I'd be sitting about and when I walked in they went oh great you've come dressed and I was like <gasps> I fucking haven't <laughs> like, <laughs> well, these are just my normal clothes so I literally just did the thing dressed how I normally <laughs> dress so you walked in and they went you're here to play scum number three <laughs> yeah, and you're ready <laughs> No need for hair and makeup. You've uh, you fucked that royally. <laughs> so it was just me awkwardly running on, stealing these carrier bags off some kid, and then running away again. And then I remember when it came on telly, I watched it, and it was that moment where I looked down and I was like, "I'm oh, wearing the same fucking outfit." <laughs> like, does that exist online? It does. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's literally like you probably wouldn't know it was me unless you knew it was me, sort of thing. Um yeah. It's like a like in the opening like little scene, but I was a mugger. I will have uh, to try and find that part of the show. Yeah. I will try. So that, so that was. You started at 18. Yeah. You got any more to come? Rest of your life story? Anything else? How did I end up just in stand up and worked in restaurants? That and is the sort bars, of thing yeah. when you get, when you start stand up so young, there's yeah, no yeah. life to talk about. Exactly. You have to have opinions. Yeah, I have none. No. That's why I just have <laughs> breakups. Yeah. <laughs> get that breakup done. Just get into toxic relationships yeah. <laughs> so that you know it's going to have a big breakup so you could sell that story. How many? <laughs> How many breakups? One. Right, since 18. One. Two, and this is like proper relationships, not just like a few days. One, two, three, four, five, six. How old are you? Twenty-seven. Nine years, six. Yeah. Yeah. Like Eighteen Everton managers. Going. <laughs> yeah. It'll last about a year and a half. <laughs> I think that might be exact. You know, sure. <laughs> 
So he left I'm eight years ago. Efficient. Every time an Everton manager gets sacked, Lauren's like, you're gone too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then they're getting a caretaker boyfriend. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, I'm going to get someone better than you. And then Sam Allardyce comes in. <laughs> like, fuck's sake. Would you shag Rafa Benitez? I don't know who he is. All oh, right. Ah. The former Newcastle manager, Rafa Benitez. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I've not got very good standards, so let's just assume probably. Like. I can't wait to show you the picture of him. Uh, <laughs> let's have a quick break and then we'll come back. Hit that point. What's happening, guys? Are you on board the CBD oil train yet? Whether you are or you aren't, you should head to supremecbd.uk, one of the official sponsors of the Have Away podcast, and get yourself some premium CBD oil product from gummy bears to the oil itself. This stuff has got a million uses. It can help with anxiety. It can help you sleep. It can help with aches and pains. It's really, really brilliant. It's been helping me and a lot of other people. Now, if you go to supremecbd.uk and use the special promo code, Code word that's W O R D. You get 30% off every and you order, and they slide us a little bit of money for sending you their way. That's how sponsorship works. They sponsor the podcast, we push you their way. It's a money game, baby, but you're gonna get money off your CBD. And what's better than money off? Nothing. Go get it. Supreme CBD. That UK. If Dan dies. Would you throw your hat in the ring as permanent co-host? I'm going to throw his hat in the ring. <laughs> <laughs> what a sign of disrespect. What would you do if I was like, look, we're interviewing for it. Dan's dead. But you got to come and sit on the couch and let me interview you. So I'd be like, why do you want to work here? Sell me this gavel. <laughs> what, like? Sell me this gavel. Okay. Now, most people use it this way. But if you want a good time... <laughs> Hired! Um, we're back on. Carl. Hello. You okay? Yeah. You look like you were playing Tetris then. Why? You just looked like uninterested in what was going on around you. I was talking to Finn. Yeah, it just looked like you were j- just doing your own thing. Sorry. And as mate. the host of this podcast, we have had a chat during the break and we're going to let you go. I'm getting everyone fight. You're next, mate. <laughs> Dan's gone. You're, it's going to be me and Finn fucking sat on a gavel. It's going to be great. Sat. Well, you don't get a choice. <laughs> I'm the boss. <laughs> the power's gone to my head. <laughs> Fucking well, how do we get this up? Applause. I've gone mad. Stop pressing Dan's button. Soz. <laughs> uh, Carl, have you got some questions Hello. for our esteemed guests? Yes. We've got one from Sean Fraser. Who's that cunt? Shawnee Fraser. <laughs> <laughs> All right, lads. If you could go back to any three historical events or eras, one to witness want to be a part of, and want to change, what would they be? Oh. Watch, be a part of, change. Um, I'd go back to... Great you got to change the Holocaust, haven't you? Got to, you got to. How are you changing it? Have a word with it. Let's say, come on, lad. We've all had the drink. I think that's what happened. Hitler just got fucking like that. All put your hands down. Come on. Stop doing the sign. <laughs> Give him the glasses back. I think, yeah, you stop the Holocaust. You change the Holocaust. You at least change it. If you can't stop it, you change it. Have Don't you... do Jews. Do something else. Yeah, but it's still as bad, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> you can't be like, nah, they've had a hard time, but people think you're talking shit because by then they won't have had a hard time because that's not happened. No, but you just go back and you like you just pick a group of people that there are less than six million of. Weren't you still persecuted better. before that, though? Well... I'm sure Jews were still persecuted before World War II. Apparently so. Yeah. Maybe. I, d- I don't know. You were in yeah. the desert for ages, we, we weren't there. Yeah. I don't watch the news. You've got two <laughs> drama students and a dropout maths degree. We are fucked on history. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so Adam's changing the Holocaust. What are you changing, Lauren? I would change Henry VIII and not have as many wives. Because oh. it's a lot to fucking remember, isn't How it? How would you change it? Would you fuck him? Hi. Because I'd be fit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, mate. I've shut out a baby. And it's a boy. You went. But think of all the kids of future generations who then wouldn't have to learn that stupid fucking rhyme. Divorce the head of die. Divorce the head of die. Like, no, shagged. There yeah. we go. <laughs> shagged. <laughs> Tie down. <laughs> shagged. What's the rhyme? Shagged. shagged Come on, year four. Me. What's the rhyme? Shagged. Why would there be a rhyme? Shagged. <laughs> You, you know how to remember how many wives he had. <laughs> Shag. Taught me through Queen Lauren's life. 
<laughs> right, so you're giving Henry VIII a boy then, so he has to stop shagging people. Yes. Nice. Right, when are you going back to change? You can't change Henry VIII or the Holocaust. <laughs> I think I'd be do more selfish reasons. I'd change a bit of my history than okay. the history. Ooh. Okay. But it's going to be a historical event. <laughs> it was for me. <laughs> 2013, I was at Benicassim Festival in nice. Spain. Yeah. I'd eaten some food that was rotten. And everyone went to the water park and I was ill. Is this and why I, you've got a fishy ass? Yeah, this <laughs> could be. Honestly, like, it was so hot to go there. And I, I, this sticks in my mind as like the biggest regret. And I just couldn't make it to the port loose So I just put my legs in a little bag and just no. let the world like out of me. You pooed in a little bag. I, I, not even poo. <laughs> I weed out my ass in the little bag. Aww. Tied it up, threw it over there. And then a few days later, when everyone's packing their stuff down, there was some Geordie lads who were a fucking nightmare. And like, well, we got fucking got everything. And they're like, yeah, I fucking got everything. Oh, I fucking, fucking, fucking fuck. And then um, I think that's New am Castle. I right? That's that's right much, uh, yeah. <laughs> Get that. I think <laughs> that's that's the team, <laughs> Fucking voting. Ah, <laughs> fucking voting, voting, man. And then one of the lads was like, "Be fucking be that little bag over there." And they're like, "Oh no, no." Did he have a they opened it, and it, someone went, "Fucking." It. Man. And that's one of my biggest regrets, <laughs> shitting in a bag. So you'd change that? Mm, yeah. Would you change, what would you change? What you ate or the bag you used? <laughs> bag I used. Aldi. Yeah, yeah, Aldi. Yeah. Ikea, the big Ikea one. <laughs> one of them blue ones. Aye. I'd need one of them. <laughs> <laughs> so, Holocaust, Henry VIII, shitting yourself at a festival. Sounds bad, doesn't it, when you went for the good one and I went for something <laughs> yeah. like that? Yeah. The good one. You got the when Adam's trumpet. the most moral on this podcast, we <laughs> know. <laughs> the next one is what would you like to be a part of? A historical event or era? Let's say 11. <laughs> going to be a part of it. Which, Which side? Part? <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. The Al-Qaeda. good side. You want to be here? You want to join Al Qaeda and go back? Yeah. Because then I could sort of convince, like, I could, you know, like, double agent it. Um. We've all had a drink. <laughs> <laughs> And just be like, maybe we shouldn't do those towers. <laughs> maybe we should do real sun centre. And it's closed. <laughs> it closed. So let's just do a loop de loop, lads. Yeah. <laughs> Woo! Yeah. Let's just right deaf to the west in the sky <laughs> with a plane. Let's yeah. not attack the economic symbol of the United States. Oh, let's just do it. I'll just be in Al Qaeda. And then I've got I've got respect at least. If I planned that. Do you know what I mean? You there'd be a group of people who'd be like, you know who's the best at terrorism? Adam Rowe. Oh, yeah, because we all remember their names, don't we? Do you remember the guy's names? Salah who... Bin Laden. He, wa- he wasn't the one. <laughs> <laughs> you fucking knobhead. Oh, we all remember them, don't we? Oh, is it fucking Bin Laden or something? <laughs> Obama Bin Laden? Oh, I can't even remember. Saddam what? What was his name? Mohammed Sutton? I know that's ridiculous. The chief hijacker. Bin Sutton. I've seen a documentary about it, actually. I think it was Durka 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 Muhammad Jihad. <laughs> uh, Google says <laughs> it was Durka Durka... Yeah, it was. Durka 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 Muhammad Jihad was the chief. Team America World Police. <laughs> he doesn't know the reference. I do know the difference. <laughs> but then for a split second, I thought, is that his actual name? <laughs> <laughs> Muhammad Jihad. <laughs> Um, Lauren, where, where, which historical event would you like to be a part of? You can't have 9 11. Mm, that was my first choice. <laughs> I wanted to be the plane. <laughs> Get on me back, man. I'm going over there. Come on. So what, is, what would I want to be a part of? Ooh. Like, a, what, what, like a big fight, but not a war. A big fight, but not a war. <laughs> 1066, that one. <laughs> What, the what is what? that? You want to be a part of the Battle of I Hastings? Ride a horse. You could do that anyway. <laughs> <laughs> but like with purpose, I don't just want to trot around a field. Be a fucking <laughs> jockey. <laughs> yeah. Run the Grand National. Yeah, run the Grand National. Yeah, there's a there's a, a, a get the first female jockey to ever win. Yeah. Was it the Grand National? Yeah, this year. And she won Cheltenham as well, didn't she? Yeah, she smashed her. I'd be the second. I'd also get a stab some cunt yeah. while she was doing it. I'd <laughs> <laughs> be the first Geordie woman <laughs> to win the Grand National. I fucking well done, pet. And mm. it is your pet, horse. Exactly. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> Got a bow on that there. Come on. Well done. Which one do you want to be a part of? I think I'd like to be a part. Do you remember in like the 70s when they were just like, oh, it was a summer of love. 
when everyone was just shagging with long hair and that. You just want to come and do drugs, don't you? Yeah. Br- Brennan's hand in the breakup well. I just yeah, want like, to I be just loved. want to go back in time and have sex. <laughs> like I Woodstock. just want someone to hold yeah, me. Yeah, like Woodstock and that. Of Woodstock, yeah, yeah, it was just like yeah. loads of people who look like they were off robot walls just shagging. Do people die at Woodstock though? Yeah. Yeah, but it wouldn't be me. Oh yeah, because you're not real. You've just gone back. I've just gone back. I can't die. Mm. You can't kill this shit. Nice. <laughs> and the last one is just witness. Witness. Hiroshima. <laughs> yeah. I don't. You get to see it, don't I? You yeah. can Google it though. It's not, it's, there's not like actual video for such, is there? I've seen. A, I've seen the shadow of a victim of Hiroshima in Sh- Hiroshima. What do you mean? I went to Hiroshima, and in the museum, there's a like a big paving slab. And the, when it hit, the person just got turned into dust. Right. I don't shot. really know what it is. It's it was, an, it was, it was like the big bomb. bomb. It was an atom bomb that ended the First World War. What? Wasn't it? Is that uh, right? It, it, was, it was the catalyst of the Second World War, of them going, ah, oh, shit. Because Japan was on Germany's side. Yeah. Mm. Uh, but, like, <laughs> it was horrendous. Like, horrendous. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You get to see it, though. I didn't know. <laughs> you do. Japan was involved in the war. Do you know what Pearl Harbor is? A very nice film. <laughs> <laughs> but I've never seen it. They were involved in it. They attacked yeah. America. How did they get Japan involved? Like, because everyone surely knew that Germany were like, they're the fucking wrong ones. They got the spikes on the hats and they got like, <laughs> like skulls You're and that. You're the Vikings there, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the Scandinavian guys. Do you think people joined the war based on sartorial <laughs> elegance? Their uniform's lovely. I'm on their side. Like picking a horse in the Grand National. He's got a nice top. <laughs> yeah, but if you that look back, too spiky. if you look back, there's clues to who's the good guys and who's the <laughs> yeah, bad guys. Yeah, because one side was killing Jewish people and the other side wasn't. No, but I mean, even how they looked. Yeah, but in the yeah, 90s, yeah, wear Hugo that's, Boss. That's <laughs> where he did wear Hugo yeah. Boss. That's where a lot of people drew the line. They're like, I can deal. I can deal with the genocide, obviously. Who hasn't done a genocide when a christening's got out of hand? <laughs> <laughs> we all get a bit tipsy every now and then. All right. Well, I can't deal with those shoes don't match that belt. <laughs> That's me, that. I'll be like, no. That's why I'm not religious. All the hats are daft. Japan were naughty in the Second World War. How naughty? Well, they, they, they were crashed, Nazis. They crashed planes into Pearl Harbor. That's which pretty naughty. Meant America then went, oh, we're going to fire. What, what's it called? Kamikaze. 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 That's it. All right. Never heard of kamikazes. I've heard of ka- like yeah, yeah, but I didn't Not know that shot. was from that. Not That's the what shot. they shouted as the, as oh. the plane went down. <laughs> kamikaze! Is it really? Yeah, you can I, hear it. I don't know whether I'm being done here. <laughs> yeah, he's chatting shit. Oh, oh no, he didn't shout kamikaze. Yes, he went down. I mean, who oh, was there did. to know? No one, no one can tell. No, some people survived. No, like so, what happened? Like, I just said <laughs> kamikaze. Kamikaze. <laughs> Couldn't hear the plane. Then, oh. <laughs> Can you hear the whistle? I've learned a lot here. <laughs> Can you hear that whistle from the ocean? Penal clues. Um, Japan were audible. What were they going to gain from the winning the war? Uh, allies. Yeah. Just mates with Germany. Yeah. Yeah. Because they Germany basically doing, backed the wrong horse. Germany doing well, weren't they? Like they were taking over everything. Yeah, yeah, they were doing good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they were doing well. well. <laughs> doing good, honest work. But why don't I know what I don't know why this turned into a historical podcast? Go on. Why I'm here don't me. we all be like, do you know when it's like when you see in the football you see the German flag and you're like because mm, it looks a bit mm. Yeah. Yeah. When we see Japan, why is everyone's not like fucking Japan? Because there are a lot of people who are like that. Are they? Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> There's like like old British and American men. Who like refused to like eat sushi? Joe and I went to the. <laughs> Sorry for stepping on that. that was so stupid. <laughs> when I went, did they walk I, past? I'm not, I'm not lying though. They're like, I'm not. I oh, don't want anything to do with them. Did they walk past like yo sushi? Like, Tuh. yeah. More like no sushi. Am I right, lads? <laughs> <laughs> they, they, they do though. Like they hate them. And Italy were the same, weren't they? Yeah. It's, when Italy I went on Germany side as well. When I was in Hiroshima. What? 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 Are you? Have you not? Do you know nothing? He was in the circus. I was a gypsy circus boy. (laughs) (laughs) We knew. We stuck together. (laughs) When I was in Hiroshima, I felt very stared at because people thought, because there's not many British expats, people Mm. thought I was American. And they're like, we don't like you. Yeah. Well, I reckon I need to do some good. I got that last week in Bella Italia as well. (laughs) People thought you were American? Yeah. 
and he didn't like you. Don't like you. <laughs> what he said? Say the silver mock thing. But yeah. So what would you go back and witness? <laughs> I, I I choose a Russian. <laughs> Where are you watching it from as well? Just above. Just, just above. above. You drop the bomb. I just get to witness it, don't I? Yeah, but, yeah, but you're not all seeing that. Yeah, you're not God. You've got to be somewhere. You could drop. You could drop the bomb and just look. Go out, does it? Oh, I don't want to do. I don't want to be responsible. Oh, well, you, you can't just sit. You can't, if you were there, you'd be dead. Well, mostly anyway. You'd want to be far enough away that, that you could see it, but all you get is. Do you know when it does the the mushroom cloud? And, and all you get is this. Your hair just does that, <laughs> so you've been a part of it. No, I don't want to be a part of it. I just want to witness it. it. You just watch the telly then. You can't be a, a, a part of nuclear, nuclear holocaust. Because you would die. <laughs> oh, okay, then Liverpool winning their first European Cup instead. First. Mm. I mean, quite similar in two one, aren't they? <laughs> <laughs> no Japanese. <laughs> what about you, Lauren? What are you going to witness? Coliseum, like gladiators. Oh, that'd Don't be sick, that wouldn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That'd be sick. Yeah. It would be like the big market in Newcastle, but with lions. <laughs> 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 lions instead of drunk women. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Anything it would be team Lions instead of you. Me. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine that outside a fucking takeaway, and then someone, the kebab owner, comes out. <laughs> Kill with a private stiletto. <laughs> Some Turkish fella in Newcastle says he's up beating the shit out of a joke. Are you not entertained? <laughs> what are you picking, Brent? I'd like to see. Do you know? Is it Guantanamo Bay when they're doing the dances and they've all been taught how to do the big dances? Uh, like the flash dance thing. Yeah, but in the prison. Uh, what's or is it like South Korea? I think it was. Like... I think it was uh, a Chinese prison. Yeah. Yeah. I want to go and watch that live. <laughs> right. Yeah. Such a theatre kid. An eclectic <laughs> bunch of answers. I'm like, and five, six, seven. No one's <laughs> picking like the building of the pyramids. No. <sighs> Dancing. Forgot about them. I've, Dancing prisoners. I've got Lego. <laughs> oh no! That's what I'd go and change. Be like, do squares. <laughs> <laughs> oh, can't slide down them. Loads <laughs> of films, anything with it as well. Two squares, small space. As you go further up. <laughs> what would you do? What, what would you go and witness? I'd go and witness the pyramids being built. Mm. Be boring be though, wouldn't it? Wouldn't watching it. No, how I long mean, are, how long are you spending watching then that? Sum up the fella putting the thing on the top then. Done. Like just, just the most pointy bit. Witness the pyramids being built. Finished then. <laughs> Might as well just go and watch someone put an ass on. <laughs> <laughs> but not a Nazi one. I'd probably go and watch someone put an ass on. <laughs> <in the past. laughs> Do you, are you going to watch that because it's the the spectacle of it, or so I want to know what happened. I want to know who did it and how. Do you Aliens. think it were them big double sized giants? You, do I think giant people built the pyramids? Yeah. No, I think they had technology that doesn't exist anymore. Oh, what like iPod nanos? Like, past, like the iPhone fourteen. <laughs> <laughs> I think they had stuff that was further what we've got in terms of engineering and like. I don't mean like space. Such a, like this is I I agree with you. And there's no real logical explanation for why I believe it. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Like, I think they had better stuff than we've got, but I I, I don't know why. Yeah. Because don't all the pyramids point up to the yeah, stars and all that? Yeah, stars. Yeah. And, like, there's, uh, up, there's, above the tombs, there's bits of stone that their size and height up, it's impossible to lift with, like, yeah. the pulleys they added. At, like, it. And Some of you, it's impossible. Every pyramid made with that stone on Earth, if you take a picture of it from high enough, it says aliens. <laughs> Imagine and how good they'd be at flat pack. <laughs> <It's just laughs> flat pack. <laughs> so fast. But they might have done it like they'd lifted the big stones, but do you remember uh, light as a feather, stiff as a board? <laughs> you could lift your mates up. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You never do that? No. no. What? We went in the circus. <laughs> <laughs> That's what the finale of it. <laughs> Now it's what me we'd all do, and you go like you get someone laid down on a table, and you'd all shove two fingers underneath, and you'd all go light as a feather, stiff as a board. Right, the next thing they're fucking up there. We play FIFA now, the bevy. Oh, right. <laughs> oh, back me up, Lauren. I know what you mean. Because there's loads yeah, of people yeah. lifting a team, say. Well, but only with two fingers. Yeah, but loads of two fingers. Are yeah, strong. but there's not sixteen of us. Just just me and three girls. You've never done light as a feather, stiff as a board? No. We, we, yeah, no. What were you doing in your childhood? Well, I wasn't... In my childhood? How yeah. old were you? What, 10? 11? I vaguely remember this. So you and school, three yeah. other 10-year-old girls put two fingers each under someone who was laying down, you could all pick them up. Yeah, not Leanne Taylor, though. She was massive. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> That's a real name. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Big unit. Magic's Big. got limits. Yeah. <laughs> 
Well, that was a wonderfully stupid question. Have you got any more? <laughs> uh, one more, and then we'll do a have a word. Yeah, just yeah, keep talking while I find it because I thought that was <laughs> enough to do it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, just opening it. Okay. Keep making noises for the people. Yeah. Um. Okay, this is from Harry Robbo. Always. Always the fucking goat. Uh, Adam's proven already he's adept at childcare with his use of the cage. Yeah. <laughs> the cage method. And there's a gap in the market for a new super nanny. If you were all employed as the new super nanny and had to go into people's homes and tell them how to discipline their little shits, how would you each go about it? Lauren. Oh. Damn. So you're a dog mummy though, so you've got some experience. Yeah, but I like my dog better than I've liked any child. <laughs> <laughs> Like, I look at my dog and I'm like, I could never kick him. And I look at a child and I'm like, I could cause some harm. Like, yeah, I but don't... they're not your kids. I think everyone, True. even or, even people who've got kids, want to kick I all the kids. I don't think I'm very maternal. Like, do I give off maternal vibes? I no. don't think I do. No, you don't. <laughs> <laughs> she doesn't know, does she? <laughs> no, absolutely not. Do you no. want kids, though? I do, but I would kind of like someone else to raise them. And then I can maybe have them when they're nice and then get rid of them when they're teenagers again. Right. Yeah. So you want a kid for six months? Yeah. You Maybe want a kid like on a loan? <laughs> Someone babysit for a little bit. You want a kid when they're like sort of 21, they're not quite breaking into the first team yet? Yes, that's it. So that's <laughs> yeah. when I want to them. go down to, to a lower league mum. <laughs> <laughs> like, you know when sometimes you get at this age and you think, ah, I think I could have kids. And then all I've got in my fridge at the minute is four Lunchables and a pepper. And I'm like, I can't have kids. That's perfect for kids. Oh, well, I wouldn't be fucking sharing. <laughs> <anyway. laughs> four Lunchables and a pepper. And a pepper. Do you want kids? Yeah, but like, not now. And I'm 34 and I look at my mates who have kids now and I go, fucking a bit young, that. Like, I want to be like- not, like, people are getting older when they're having kids, aren't they? I'll be like Des O'Connor, <laughs> 72. Popping out dead. a dusty baby. Yeah, yeah, dead. <laughs> <laughs> Gone. Because you've got to get, get gauge it right, aren't you? Because you can't be too old that, you know, yeah. Yeah. comes out wrong. Dusty come. But <laughs> I don't want one now. Could you imagine me as a dad? No. Yeah. Could you? Yeah. I can imagine you turning into one. I can't imagine you as one now. And I'd be like, right, we're going the circus. I'm like, oh, this again. I'm like, yeah. I'll go and see what granddad does. <laughs> He's fucking juggling car batteries. <laughs> <laughs> Stay with us two balls. I'm good with kids, though. Like, I've got nieces and nephews. I'm mm. great with kids. There's a difference, though, isn't there? Giving them back after you've had them for yeah. an hour is different. What I really too. love doing is going to Paul Smith's house. And Ryle and his two children up and, and then leaving. Leaving. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's great. I'm that auntie who you just Here's like all the in. sugar in the world. Yeah. Let's have a fight. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What was the question? Uh, if you were a super nanny, what discipline techniques, what would you do to, to uh, help people? Just give them a smack. Like naughty kids. Little shit. I, I think the cage is the way forward. Yeah. I stand by it. Is it like it? a puppy cage? Yeah. Yeah. But a smaller one. It's just big enough for the child. Oh. So they can't move. How long are we putting the kid in? Like, until it agrees to... Until it agrees it was ways. wrong. <laughs> Does it not grow exponentially like when your phone locks? Every time you get it wrong, it's locked for an hour. <laughs> <laughs> Just put it in until it stops crying and you go, you're going to behave, come out. A little shit again. Back in the or cage. Was it like a saw trap where the longer they're in there, it just contracts and it's like, we well, better stop behaving or you're going to be. knives on the side <laughs> of it as well. Like you're a robot. <laughs> like a final level of Tomb Raider. <laughs> But I, I agree with you. A good crack never Bring affected back me in smacking. anyway. <laughs> we all got smacked as kids, like on the legs and stuff. Yeah. Hold no, the arm up in the air. Slap the back I of the look legs. how you turned I out. I was dead good, though. I got a slap <laughs> on the back of the legs. Back of the legs. I once slapped my mum once back. Oh. She likes that, though, doesn't she? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Not on the face, though. <laughs> I was about Imagine third. if she went, ooh. <laughs> <laughs> So I was about uh, <laughs> Imagine. I and he did. <laughs> imagine that. Oh, mama. Uh, so I was about 13. I told my mum to fuck off. Yeah. Wow. And she slapped me in the face. And I went, no. Nah. So I slapped her back. And then I didn't get a proper, I got like, you know, sometimes when it doesn't quite, yeah. when you're not looking at the elbow. Yeah. So I got her. And then I got, I did it again, but full on. Fuck off. You went for round two. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, like a nose break. Yeah. One of them. But on the cheek. Yeah. Fucking like Dalson or whatever he's called off Street Fighter. Yeah. <laughs> Give him one of them. And my mum was so shocked. And I've never seen my dad move so quick. He vaulted up off the sofa. I ran through the back garden and jumped over the fence. 
He's just started throwing juggling balls at me. <laughs> <laughs> so I've never sworn in front of my mum, not once. In all of my years, never swore in front of my mum. I've sworn behind the back. You've sworn you've sworn in front of my mum. Yeah, behind the back. <laughs> <Fucking love that. laughs> Thank you for getting me there. Yeah. <laughs> what she said as well. Why um, why aren't you sworn in front of your mum? Uh, she doesn't like it, so I was just respecting her. Aww. Maybe she does like it though. She said she doesn't. <laughs> no, yeah, but maybe that's yeah. her king. <laughs> and then I'm not gonna swear in front of my mum. Oh, yeah, I'm going cage. That's my answer. Cage and smacking. Smack your kids, put them in smack cages. Smack your kids, That'd put them in cages. That would be such a short episode of Super Nanny, wouldn't it? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Just smack them. She Which one in. is it? The eight-year-old? Oof, credits roll. That's it. The little addendum at the end. Sadly, Johnny died <laughs> from his injuries. <laughs> okay, let's have a win. Um, I've got two here. Probably only have time to do one. Because uh, this has been a bumper, bumper episode. Uh, Lauren, I'm going to give you the option. Do you want a stand up one uh-huh. or a thievery one? A what one? A thievery? Yeah. Or thievery? Go on, thievery. Okay, Ooh. so this is from Anonymous. Eh? Coward. You'll <laughs> see why. Hiya, babes, in Dan's camp voice. Uh, please keep me anonymous, but I want you to have a word either with me for being a bit gullible or to a thieving rat. I went out at the weekend with work. This included another team. Who I don't really know. So, you know, when you work for a big company yeah, and they yeah. put you all together, blah, blah, blah. When it came to the end of the night, my phone was nowhere to be found. There was only our work lot in the area. So, we asked everyone to check, see if they have accidentally picked it up. No one claimed to have it. We tried phoning, but it was on silence and it just rang out. My bank card was in the back. So, I immediately rang the bank and blocked it. I got home and used Fire My iPhone. We located the street. We went and knocked there. <laughs> Uh, oh, they, uh, they sent like the message to come up on Find My iPhone as well. Yeah. And, you know, they, they switched it off. Uh, on the third attempt, someone answered and then it went away. My partner said he could see the name in the street. Uh, and if they told us what number house, they would go and collect the phone. When we got there, it was a member of the other team <gasps> answered the door. Oh. They opened the door, said, I'm so pissed. They gave them the phone back. Bank card was not in the phone case. Mm. So she said, go and have a look in your house. They went in and come back out with the bank card. So they took it out the phone. The following day, I got a message saying they don't know how it ended up with it. I'm so sorry about that. I would like to think it was an honest, drunken mistake. My partner and friends think they took it on purpose. And the fact my bank card wasn't in the back proves that. What do you think? Should you have a word with me for trusting them or have a word with them for being a thief? Shit house behaviour. Yes. Yeah. You, you think they stole it? I think they stole it. Yeah? Absolutely. You, you don't ever just... had anyone you've worked could steal something from you? Yes. We had this one time I'm working in the bar. Um, and we kept with tips and like a little cup and like weren't in a bar you made like what like four pence tips or something but I'd had a good night I'd made mm, I actually knew what you were fucking doing this was uh, I mean. 2014 back in the day <laughs> and I made five whole pounds buying the bar one night and I was like sweet Ooh. that's my taxi home and then it disappeared conveniently someone had moved the glass to where there was no cameras and it disappeared and nobody like obviously owned up to it and a few days later this lad he um, his tips went missing and he had like say like a fiver again or something and then one of the girls conveniently found five pound by the bins and was like oh there's your tips back and I was like it's you it's you it's gotta be you no Did way you prove it that's couldn't prove it couldn't prove it it was like quite a shitty pub so the CCTV was just like a fucking disposable camera in the corner <laughs> like <laughs> did your dad ever lose his juggling balls at work I mean he didn't lose them but there was this pesky little guy <laughs> <laughs> you ever had anything stole off you uh, I I've I once caught a thief. So yeah. me and my ex. Which one? <laughs> big nipples? No, not saggy big nipples. No, not saggy <laughs> ass. Cunt. Not not the cunt. Massive fanny. Not the massive fanny. <laughs> one with the lazy eye. The one we share a dog with. Yeah. Yeah, we all share a dog with <laughs> my ex. <now. laughs> so we were walking down the main street in Manchester, and then she went, oh, look, there's a hot dog thing, hot dog stall. And then I just looked down, and someone's hand went into a pocket. Uh, come down. And I went, have you got your phone? But no, I just seen this woman. This uh, mm. this woman. <laughs> we don't need descriptions. That says enough. Walking off, and I just grabbed her by the arm and I went no. And she turned around. And she she had this jacket. Her phone was in it. And she went. I'm oh, sorry. Give me the phone back. And then plain clothes police tackled her ah. to the floor. It was fucking great. And she's like, she was going. Please let me let me off. I'm like, My no, sister did something not similar. Not you. You're Italian. I know what you've done during <laughs> war. And she's like, please, <laughs> what about my family? <laughs> when my sister was in Greece, you know, when you get like the gang. I'm of so street glad you kids. didn't make a Japanese there, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> I, my sister got her like 
this was back in the days of cameras, got her camera stolen by like a kid who obviously, you know, when they're, they're obviously working for a gang or whatever, probably very sad. But my sister's like hard as fuck. So my sister just chased this kid down the street. And I was like, what must that have looked like? Some poor little Greek child just running and this like <laughs> Jordy lass running after being like, come back here. <laughs> <laughs> I caught a thief in Edinburgh. So do you know my room in the caves? Mm-hmm. So there's two sides to it, isn't there? There's the room bit and then the bit where the bar is. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So that's where I would wait before the show. And yeah. my agent would sometimes just come and lash her bag down. Yeah, yeah. Because they're always there for the start of your show. It was Jen. Oh, yeah. And she'd put her bag and her jacket down. And then there was a guy who quite clearly wandered in with the crowd. And he was just sat near Jen's bag. So she went over. I went, oh, excuse me, can I just take that? And he's a bit sort of drunk and stumbly. And uh, I went, check, you've got everything. And she wouldn't have otherwise. And she went, yeah, he's got me. He's got me purse and my phone. <gasps> so I sprinted after him and he sprinted away. And I'm slowly catching him up. But then two lads who seen what's going on are like ahead of me. Um, what's going on? And I was like, he's robbed something. So I was just about to catch him, but they just tripped him. <gasps> and he just went flying. So I got the stuff and he was like, all right, you can have it back. You can have it back. You can have it back. And uh, my agent, I, I went to her, what do you want to do? She was like, I want him arrested. So he got arrested and then they were going to go to court, but nothing got done. That's the problem. Nothing gets done. Yeah, it's because it's not worth the time, is it? The I, caught time, a, like. I caught a thief in hot water. Did you? Did you? Yeah, I had a new member of staff start a girl, and on the first night she went to the toilet with a phone, and left the phone in the toilet. Came back out and like an hour later, she's like, "Oh, don't know where my phone is." Looked around the bar and went, "Where did you last have it?" She went in the toilet. So she went in the toilet, the toilet was empty, and I was like, "The show had already started." So I said, "Announcement: A member of staff's lost the phone. Can you please keep your eye out for it?" Blah blah blah. So I kept ringing it and walking around the theatre to see if I could hear anything. And I could hear a buzz, mm. but I just couldn't locate it because it was in the dark. I was like, I need to do searches here, but I don't want to like accuse anybody. So on the way out, I said to the bouncers, I wanted to do a bag check and a search of every man on the way out <clears throat> for like alcohol or like glass. Like, oh, there's a new rule, you can't have glass on Harbin Street. Mm. And we found the phone in someone's bag. <gasps> and she went to, oh, um... That, uh, that that's my second work phone. That it, it looks exactly the same. I mean, like, well, it, I've said the announcement like three times. Yeah. That I remember the staff's lost the phone. You know that's her phone. And she was adamant. About, right, I'll call the police then. Get them down. She went, oh, she can just have it. <laughs> I went, yes, yeah, she can just have it. <laughs> oh, phone. my God. <laughs> yeah. What a horrible, horrible cunt. Uh, to wrap up the other word there, they've defo, defo, defo robbed yeah. it. And there's nothing you can do about it. I it, think because the they were like a, the, a rival team. They were just going to take loads of fucking bollock pics and then like slide it back onto our desk the next day. And she's like, oh, look, my phone's then. And then it's just full of bollock. Yeah. <laughs> all that. All, 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 all that. that. I think it's yeah. that. Now you said it, I think it's that. <laughs> full of bollock. bollock drop. <laughs> and the only reason they took the card out is just to put it next to the knob for perspective. <laughs> just to get some reference. <laughs> Do you know what? If someone's getting pitched my bollocks, they can fucking pay for it. <laughs> Swipe that on my eyes, it'll. Uh, it's a two pound a bollock, I think you'll find. Oh, that is a very bumper episode of a podcast with no Dan Nightingale. Funeral arrangements will be announced soon. It will be a public <laughs> funeral. Uh, thanks for coming in. Thanks for having us. Where can everyone find you? Um, so I'm on Instagram at Brennan Reese. There we go. Twitter? At Brennan Reese. Facebook? Brennan Reese. <laughs> <laughs> Lauren, where can they find you? Not in Morrison's anymore. Yay! Yay! Where are you working now? In a restaurant. <laughs> <laughs> Is it the Morrison's Cafe? <laughs> oh, no, we do pizzas. Yeah. <laughs> what what restaurant are you working in? Uh, it's in Gateshead, a little family restaurant. You don't want to say the name don't in case people in follow you. Exactly. Okay. Um, where nice can they restaurant. actually follow you? Though, they where follow you would encourage me on it? Twitter, at Lauren Patterson, and Instagram, at Lauren underscore Patterson. Wow. Yeah. There's Lauren Patterson taken. It must have been. Yeah. Bastards. Bitch. I'm Adam Rowe Comedy on Twitter, and I'm Adam Rowe Comedian and everything else, because I, I was always doing Adam Rowe Comedy, but then it was, <laughs> I lost the login to Adam Rowe Comedy on Instagram <laughs> and couldn't get it back. So I had to change it to comedian. So now it's different on different things. But you know where to find me. And if you don't find out, it's your own fucking fault. Um, We have got a lot of extra content over on patreon.com slash haveawaypod. We've got the ghost hunts. We've got three previous lockdown lock-ins. And there is another lockdown lock-in coming this month with the unbelievable Stephen Tries. Patreon.com slash haveawaypod. Three quid a month as the minimum thing. There's over 4,000 people there now. Don't miss out on any of the best stuff we produce. Thanks to these two for coming in. Fuck you. Fuck you, ma. Shaggy nan. <laughs> Who gives us fuck what you think? <laughs> Can you press that button, please? No, apologise. I'm sorry. Properly.
I'm sorry that you feel that that was upsetting. 